Hey all, and welcome to Geek Freaks. I am Frank, and I'm with Daniel. Hola. And I'm with Jonathan. Hey, hey, yo. That Olaf throws me off sometimes. Like, just gonna, really? It. Yeah, it does sometimes. <clears throat> so I'm like, what's he going to say today? <laughs> so, am I going to have to translate this? Yeah. This is going to get difficult. We're a bilingual podcast about, about all things geek. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go over a couple things in news. Then we're going to be talking about uh, the Nintendo Direct event. Then we have the Apple event. And then uh, we have an It Chapter 2 review, which that'll be with Squeaks later on. Me and him are going to do that. And a Gears of War 5 review. So, uh, cause he's been playing that instead of World of Warcraft with me. What a jerk. And then we'll get to what you guys are playing at the end. We're going to try to be good about that now. All right. So let's dig in, uh, for the news. South Park got, uh, gets renewed for three more seasons, bringing the total to 26 seasons. Ooh. Um, they have three, it says total of 30 episodes. I think it's supposed to be, yeah, it, no, it'll be a total of 30 episodes and new, three new seasons. Uh, this season, 23rd season, they're going to hit 300th episode. Uh, yeah. it starts up on September 25th. It's still the highest rated comedy from for ages 18 to 49 year olds. It doesn't make sense that that's the case. Yeah. Because I've heard that same statistic basically for Rick and Morty, which is mm. a far better show. In oh, my yeah. opinion. Nowadays, anyways, you know. Maybe they, they do it based on volume of, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like you rate each episode and then you add them together. And sure, they got 300 episodes to get credit for. but Or it's when Rick and Morty's not on the air, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. You got to look at the the that? parameters of that. Because Rick and Morty's barely on the air. Yeah, so if you're going off for like a grand total. But they, they scaled back because uh, I want to say South Park used to do the 22 episode seasons, but now they do a 10, 10 episode seasons. Yeah. And they're like connecting arcs. They're really bad nowadays. Honestly, I, I stopped watching it after like, <laughs> shoot, the like eighth season or something. Oh, that's pretty early on shit. Yeah, I, I got tired of it. I felt like it was the same and then it was just more offensive and they're just doing they're trying too hard yeah they're that's exactly it they're just trying way too hard yeah that's why i felt to me it's too much like slapstick like very simple being crude and crass as much as they can to make it funny to make people laugh but those are cheap laughs i I, I like something that's got a little more i don't know subtlety and intellect into the comedy that's exactly what rick and morty is they'll give you they'll get you the same thing the same itch that south park gives you where it's like Oh, uh, you know, whatever, a joke that's too crude. Yeah. But then you're sitting there thinking about, like, Schrodinger's cat or something like that. Like, <laughs> some, like, awesome concepts or whatever. Yeah. So I think it can be done better. Uh, you know, thanks to South Park for pioneering a bit for a way for this. Um, I still watch some of the newer ones. Uh, you know, PC Principal, I really like that character when they added him. And that was, like, season 20, I think. Was that the, the PC bra? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then me and Joe. And, Everybody. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You PC, bro? I'm PC UC State. <laughs> or some stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man. That's good stuff. Uh, okay. So let me get a statement. I have a statement here from uh, Parker and Stone. They're the two guys that made the show. One of them apparently said this. I don't think they talked in unison, but they didn't say which one said this. Um, apparently, our efforts to get our own show canceled have fallen short. Luckily, we, call- we love Comedy Central and Kent and our staff. So we're looking forward to new cancelization opportunities in the next few years. Now, that's just how they've been. These guys have been very cavalier. They had the Book of Mormon. They had you guys remember the movie uh, Basketball? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They made that. The two guys yeah. from Basketball, of course. Um, so yeah, they, I think that right now they just made all the money in the world. They found a good system where they're only doing the ten episodes. And when they make an episode, they they've live streamed a little bit of it before, where they can make an episode in a week, an animated episode. It's unreal. Yeah. So their life, I think, is in a pretty good spot right now. They'll just keep going until they tell them to stop going. Yeah. I think that might be the case too. They might be kind of cheap. Like the show production might be kind of cheap because yeah. it's just all on computers now. And if you're printing money, yeah, you know, why stop? I mean, like you're saying, just keep going until yeah. someone's not interested anymore, and then that's how you know when it's time to retire. And I, but I think the, I, I, and I think their animation style is far cheaper than it is for like The Simpsons, which is still yeah. going on along too. Probably. But Simpsons goes hand drawn mm-hmm. for a lot of the stuff. There's a computerization to a lot of it now too, but still, you know, it's pretty intense. Uh, over the 22 season runs that we've had so far. South Park has been nominated for 18 Emmys, winning four statues, including Outstanding Animated uh, animated Program in 2013, 2009, 2007, and 2005. That 05 to 09 are good seasons. Mm-hmm. That's really good times right there. Uh, this is all from Entertainment Weekly. So, oh, Okay, looking back, what is your guys' favorite South Park episode? Uh, all right. My favorite episode was uh, the... Make love, not Warcraft. Oh, you can't thinking. take mine. I had to say, I had to, because back then, at that time, I was already playing WoW. Yeah. So I was just like, unreal you know, how much yeah. they nailed it. I tell, and it was funny too, because there was certain parts like that they're trying to kill their own race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then 
everybody, all like wild WoW players were like upset. That, that's not true. You can't do that. Like yeah. we're all getting offended. Yeah, you got to take it as a yeah. grain of salt because there are things that they do in there. Like, yeah, he's not wearing anything but a helmet and a dagger. It's like, I don't care how strong that helmet and a dagger is. You guys are wearing armor. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. fine it, with wild rules, you know. And but, then uh, one more thing I want to yeah. say. Uh, I like the movie. The movie was good. They're actually working really on they're, like, they're talking about doing oh, another one. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, I really love that movie. That movie was really good. Mm -hmm. I know it was an episode, but it was still a movie, and I actually enjoyed it. No, it was really good. And I actually... My parents didn't know, but I don't know if they still know about this yet. So if they listen to it, they might. Me and my cousin David and my cousin Julia, we all ditched school when that movie came out. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And uh, we stayed at my uh, uh, cousin David's house, or maybe Julia's, I don't remember which one. But we stayed there, we watched it all, and it was like, this is so dirty. It's like all the, they say cuss words a lot. And yeah. then we watched it all, and we watched it again. That's tight. Yeah. And we all got to stay home. So it was pretty, that was pretty epic. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. What's your favorite one? Uh, I looked it up just now. It's season 12, episode six called Overlogging. You remember Ooh, when, the, yeah. when the internet goes down? Yeah. That's and a good everybody one. like oh, the spooky ghosts. Yeah. yeah. Everybody Wait, packs I... up and moves to an internment camp where they got like. Oh, okay. And then they're like drawing pictures of like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it, uh, Brazilian <laughs> that, fart that porn and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 And he sneaks into their uh, whatever that. Camp. The one place they have internet or whatever. It's like yeah. a triple. Yeah. 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 That's funny. <laughs> There's a spooky ghost. You guys see the spooky ghost? <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. That was a really good one. Um, I, I like the one where they're really into Guitar Guitar Hero. Oh, yeah, yeah, And then yeah. the, my favorite part, <laughs> exactly. They're sitting there, like this guy who's like Jorgensen or whatever his name was. Yeah. He's like super good. And he's sitting there playing like hands like... At a cafe at somewhere. At a cafe, yeah. not plugged in or like that. You just hear the actual thing. And, and like, everyone's like <laughs> clapping like, oh my God, I, I love this song. Yeah. <laughs> click, 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 click. So, uh, I don't know how good that's going to sound on the podcast. <laughs> it clicks. But yeah, that's uh, those. there are some gems, okay? So we got to admit that. But yeah. I think the show has really kind of lost its course. Uh, next up, we're going to be talking about Civilization Six. Wait, what was yours? I told you, mine was the Guitar, oh, guitar yeah. Hero episode. Oh, Guitar the, Hero. Oh, okay. Uh, cool, you took my Make Love and I Warcraft episode. Oh, okay. I thought you, I was expecting you to bring that one up too. I was trying not to copy. Yeah. Oh, what the? I swapped it up amid your conversation. I'm trying to like. Oh, okay. Because I, I know you said that. And I was like, wait, there's supposed to be one more. Because I thought you, I was expecting yeah. you to bring up the Make oh, Love Not Warcraft. That one is such a good episode. And it, it's so true. The fact that, so what it is is like, when you're not playing WoW, you kind of don't want to be reminded about WoW for a while. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. to where there are times where i'm watching south park and i'll skip that episode so i don't see it because it kind of just gets me uh, yeah when you're on like a it. like a slow yeah when you're on a break yeah, whatever yeah, you know break so you're like i don't really want to yeah. see anything with the workout right now and that show killed it like they did a really good job yeah. so always gets me to it all right next up civilization six now has added a battle royale mode i wish you guys would play civ six actually john i think you'd really like it yeah i'm looking at pictures of it right now okay um it's called red death it's a custom uh, multiplayer scenario that has new factions, new characters, and some new units. Uh, this is said by Luke Plunkett, who wrote the article. Uh, set in the apocalypse, you'll be playing as one of these new sides. Okay, so he means by factions. And trying to get <clears throat> onto the last spaceship leaving Earth, all while killing everyone around you and trying to avoid the encroaching and titular Red Death, which kills everyone it touches. Uh, Red Death is part of the Civilization VI free September uh, 2019 update. The voiceover from the trailer I really liked because it was basically the same guy from Wildstar every time he leveled up. Mm. That like, yeah, you could do this. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> oh man, it's really good. Uh, some of the new factions are the mutants, the pirates, the borderlands. It's possible new, new factions are the jocks, doomsday preppers, cultists, and wanderers. And then the new barbarians are called raiders. Uh, this is all from a Kotaku article from uh, written by uh, Luke Plunkett. So... What do you think about them adding this battle royale mode? Now, Daniel, you played a lot of battle royale games. You're your PUBG and your Fortnite. Yeah. I know you're a big Fortnite man. I've never played a Civilization. You have played game. Civilization. No. So okay, so but you're familiar with the game, right? Isn't that like kind of like Age of Empires? In a stretch. So oh. think think Age of Empires. Okay. But now you have an encroaching red circle around it, and you're trying to fight everybody off. Do you think that's a good gameplay? Do you think that would work out well? Yeah. If I mean, I think. It'd do good if you're a big fan of that game, but I'm a huge fan of it. I'm I'm not really a big fan of it, so I kind of me I think it's kind of dumb. You don't like that play style? No. Okay. What about John? Are you a fan of that kind of play style? Yeah, and that makes it, that sounds really good because it's adding it's pretty much adding like a hourglass to the game. Like you have it really is. Oh, you're yeah. getting that adrenaline rush because you have to hurry up and get out of that zone and reorganize your forces and try to yeah. you know reach a certain point or whatever. So I think it, it's a good thing to add to a game if the game's already successful. 
that just puts fuel on the fire, I think. The the moniker that a lot of people use about Civilization is the most addictive PC game in the world. That's crazy. It, and there really? are times. Oh yeah, that's that's like the, that's kind of like the moniker mm. people use a lot. So, um, the what's nice about this is a normal Civilization game, even if you go small map, online speed, stuff like that, will take a couple of days to finish. Mm. And so this looks like it's a good way to kind of get in for a half hour or an hour of play with your friends and then kind of just be done if you guys don't really want to sit there for. If you were to do like, I've done campaigns that have taken me a month to do. Hmm. They're big, big, long campaigns with a huge map and you're trying to beat up people on science and domination and all these things like that. The game's huge. Yeah. Um, and that's single player because a multiplayer, you almost can't even do that. It's just too big. Uh, so I like the idea of them putting it. It kind of reminds me of the League of Legends when they put in, uh, what's the all solo mid called? A-Ram. Uh, A-Ram. It kind of reminds me of A-Ram where it's just like little quickie games you can get in there now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I just can't see it in that game. I could see yeah. it in a shooter. Like, shooter for sure. I oh, yeah. See it, yeah. But I can't see it in that game. Yeah. That's going to be one of the hard things, too, is because you're giving, a, you know, a set amount of units. So, okay, how do you position your new units as an encroaching death comes behind you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll give it a try, and I'll probably stream it so we can kind of get some yeah, visuals I'll, on I'll it. I'll watch it just yeah. to see how it looks. All right, next up in this news. this Sometimes when I'm writing these notes, I'm getting these nice fancy outlines done. Something will drop, and I'm like, son of a bitch, i got to change my entire plan and move some stuff for next week and stuff like that. Well, this is one of them. Game of Thrones has a new prequel announced. Okay? Uh, this this is from Deadline, by the way. Uh, Nelly Adriva. Now, if you guys don't follow Deadline on Twitter or something like that, I'm talking to streamers as well. Gotcha. And uh, make sure you guys follow Deadline. They're such a good resource. A lot of times when you're reading an article on like comicbook.com or IGN, you see in the articles, it's like, from Deadline, da, 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 da. like, okay, you guys are getting your sources from mine. <laughs> okay, so um, this is going to be another prequel uh, for Game of Thrones. HBO has ordered, <clears throat> is close to order, and they said, uh, this story, it's set three year, 300 years in the past from the original show, and it's all about the slow decline of the Targaryens. Mm-hmm. At that point, you're starting to get, um, like, 300 years in the past, Targaryens are doing good, but then I think the idea is that they're going to start to see, like, the dragons get smaller, which means you can use less CGI, which is nice. And then you have, like, the 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 Targaryen Civil War and all like that. So there's a lot that could happen. Uh, I was actually going to bring the book. I forgot about this, but this is based off of the new book, Fire and Blood, which is uh, um, George's most recent book, which is uh, part one of a history book for the Targaryens. And uh, it's him working on it. And Ryan Condal, which is a co-creator and producer of The Colony. Uh, the Colony is a show on Netflix. Have any, any of you guys heard of The Colony? Uh, yeah, I've seen the previous one. I've never watched okay. it yet. Uh, the Ronin Geek Official Podcast, Partner Podcast, they're really good. Check them out. They are busy. So I, my only connection with this is listening to them talk about how good it is. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, I got to I gotta watch Colony eventually. Um, but yeah, so they they really vouch for it. And it seems like it's really good. And uh, this is a, a brand new attempt on one that they tried before. In 2017, they tried this pilot before mm-hmm. and it didn't work. So uh, this condo guy, he ended up taking it and like totally redoing what the pilot would be and all like that and then bringing them a whole new story. So... We'll see how it goes. Uh, this is from uh, this is from Martin uh, in May. He wrote this. We uh, we have had five different Game of Thrones successor shows in development at HBO, and three of them are still moving forward nicely. So that shows that not only do we have the pilot that's already being made right now, we have another one that's about to happen. That's this one, and then there's another one coming on its way. These guys are milking that Game of Thrones cow. That's awesome. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, it is, dude. So just so everybody knows, Daniel doesn't like Game of Thrones for some freaking reason. Yeah. Want to explain why you don't like Game of Thrones? The first episode was really boring, and you couldn't get me. past that. So Daniel has bad opinions on things. Make sure you guys remember that as you come forward. Uh, the other pre- the other prequel that's already been made we talked about in the past is the one that's um, set in the Age of Heroes, like it's the decline of the Age of Heroes, and so and it looks like that'll be the top of Southeros. Um, so that'd be pretty interesting there. Uh, HBO refuses to comment on any of these Game of Thrones projects. So everything we're getting is from the writers and the directors, which is kind of interesting that Game of Thrones doesn't want to come out and say like, oh, look at what we're doing. Uh, from HBO, they said, one of the guys ha- have been uh, is chairman for Warner, uh, Bob Greenblatt, Greenblatt said, it's a double-edged sword, he told Deadline. Uh, we're having a conversation about how we smartly continue Game of Thrones universe, but we have to really be thoughtful about not killing the Golden, uh, golden Goose and not putting on shows that aren't up to the quality level. How many is too many? <laughs> uh, so yeah, so what they're saying is, you could flood the market. That's what happened with Star Wars. Yeah. You flood the market, all of a sudden nobody wants to see anything with Star Wars on it anymore. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. And right now, Game of Thrones is a good reason to resub 
every so often for HBO. You just go like, I'm kind of in the mood for Game of Thrones. So you just yeah. resub to the HBO now. You watch them all and then you're good again. You know, mm. kind of itches that scratch. That's hard. So yeah, you want itch. you want to make a lot of money out of it, but you can't do it all at once. Yeah. That's like with the phones. They could release the 10 new updates with the next phone, but they're going to give you the the one with the new camera yeah. first, then the next one will have a wider screen, and then the next one will have more memory, so that every year you have to go buy a new one. We're going to be talking about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the really? new iPhone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, well, do you think it's a good idea for them to be working on the 300 years in the past era? One way to swing the Targary- Targaryen's decline? I think, it, I mean, if, it depends on the story. If it's a, got a good story, I mean, you could put it at any timeline in the same realm, as long as it's got, you know, a... a good story that the audience is going to like then i mean they we've yeah. seen that they can take a good story and make a, a great show out of it so they have the, the ability so yeah I, I don't see any reason not to now from from my remembering they said this is the decline of the targaryens but 300 years in the past if i remember correctly is when the targaryens arrived so i don't think that's the decline i think that's the the rise of the targaryens maybe we'll see the rise and the fall so that, i think that might be the case this might be an overarching yeah. story which means we'd have a shifting cast like maybe every season a new jump forward of 50 years yeah that'd be, be cool. kind of cool i don't know um another thing i'm worried about is might be too too, too many targaryens yeah I might get burnt out on that but i mean it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a whole new cast so it'll probably be primarily targaryens right it's not like you're going back and forth between they're, they're not going to be like the rare dragons they were in the previous series they're going to be the right. way, the standard people I would kind of just like to see like something about like the Mormons or some, a family that's not real known, yeah, and be about their drama for a little while. Go to Dorne. Dorne is so cool, and the show just botched to them. Yeah, and, but one thing too is we only know we only know a little bit about the Targaryens, but you're you're going to get a whole bunch of side characters. You're going to have some new Davos or somebody that they're going to oh, pour a lot of detail into who who was minuscule enough to have never been mentioned in the in the, in the tales to the children. But right. you're going to find that oh wow, this guy's. A, you know, great character. I wish they would have written a whole separate book about him. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. The little guys that don't get talked about often. Mm-hmm. Good point. Davos is like, he's, he is my favorite character. I love <laughs> Davos so much. Um, so, uh, yeah. Anytime you sold it to me on that one. Good call. <laughs> good, good. I have the book, but it's like, oh yeah, let me just throw it on the pile of shit I've got to read. Right. Especially when you're doing a podcast where you review things. I'm just like, okay, we have a Lord of the Rings show coming up. I got to make sure to read all the Lord of the Rings again. So I'm on top of that. And you're reading other people's reviews on the stuff that you're trying to review too. So you get as much input as possible. Well, you know, it's a lot of sensory overload. And then it's like, I just want to freaking play WoW Classic. <laughs> 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 this week is like, this week I was like, this is, I'm going to get, I'm going to get to level 60 this week. That was a freaking joke. You know how much notes and stuff like it was such a big week for us. What so. level are you? 30 on really? the warrior, but I'm 25 or seven or something like that on the hunter. Wow. So re-rolling was not great. Yeah. It was not. <laughs> um, let's see. And then let's move on to next news. James Gunn releases the full cast list for suicide squad. Mm-hmm. Now, he didn't release who they're going to be playing, just that this is the cast. Uh, we do have the originals coming back in Harley Quinn uh, being played by Margot Robbie, Captain Boomerang by uh, Jai Courtney, Jay Courtney, one of those two, probably Jay. Rick Flag is by Joel uh, Kinnanum. I like him a lot. He's from that show you like, Altered Carbon? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the main guy from that. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Amanda Waller's coming back uh, with Viola Davis. Viola Davis is, she's awesome. Everything she touches. The newcomers, Idris Elba. What? Yeah. So we had him. We, we kind of knew about him a little bit, but yeah, that's awesome. Peter Cabaldi. I've heard of him. Don't remember right now. Here we go. All the Google start to happen. Mm-hmm. Storm Reed. You get Storm Reed over there. John Cena is coming in. I think John Cena, this is a good role for him. I think he's the kind of guy that would be good in a, this kind of superhero movie where it's grounded and just crazy. Mm-hmm. Alice Braga. Nathan Fillion, which is really good because I love Nathan Fillion. What's he from? Nathan Fillion. Uh, he's from um, Far Cry. Not Far Cry. I always do that. Peter Cabaldi. Oh, he's Doctor Who. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. That'll that'll tickle the fans. Yeah. He's one of the older Doctor <laughs> Who's. Right. I don't recognize her, but nice <laughs> Googling. Both of you guys are on top of it. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> Continue. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up, Taika Waititi, which is also like the Golden Goose right now. Yeah. He's the one that did the, uh, uh, Thor Ragnarok. Oh, yeah. And uh, he plays the rock guy in that one. I can't remember. Oh, like Korg yeah. or whatever. I can't remember. Yeah, I think that's right. He's hilarious. Um, he has a new movie out. I want to see that. Um, he's been kind of under the radar. Pete Davidson's in this one. Nobody's talking about Pete Davidson being in this, but I'm really excited for that. He's from SNL. Uh, and then Jennifer Hol- Holland. So <clears throat> this cast is huge. I mean, there's so much more that I didn't state that's on that cast list. It's going to be a huge movie. 
He's also bringing in Sean Gunn. It's his brother, which was also he used he did that in Guardians of the Galaxy as well. Sean Gunn is the um, guy that ends up inheriting the whistling arrow. Oh, <clears throat> that's James Gunn's brother. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, so some of the things that were announced at the Nintendo Direct that we had this week was Overwatch got confirmed. We had all kinds of leaks showing that Overwatch was coming, so that's no surprise there. Squeaks is going to buy his fourth copy. I'm going to buy my second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they, had, uh, <laughs> they had Super Kirby Clash come out, and I'm trying to download this right now so I can play it, and then I'll, I'll tell you guys about it. We'll do a review on this one because it's free to start, and I want to know what the hell that means. Mm. So I think maybe you like play the first couple levels, and then you need to uh, have, you know like buy or whatever yeah maybe you buy per boss so what it is it's a boss fighter where you and three other people fight a boss and like they have mechanics or whatever and then you just keep going to the next boss and keep just go clearing bosses mm. with people to me it kind of feels like a cuphead but nobody else is saying that so i might just be the one missing out but i'll be trying it out and then we'll be doing a review for that and i'll be coming Wait, up in a couple weeks it's a curve game and you're gonna be playing with multiple people yeah but what all characters cool? are you gonna be are you different all... colored kirby's the last Kirby uh, game was that too, and the last Kirby game was a lot of fun. Okay, that's oh, okay. And it's the same. It's the later ones where you like can suck up something and get different powers. And yeah, stuff so like each so. Kirby has a different hat and stuff like that. And then, okay. yeah, they can do yeah. that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I don't think I spend my money on it. Yeah, uh, the Mana Saga is getting a remake. Trials of Mana. Have you played any of the Mana games? No. You? No. They're a big RPG. I'm not. See, the thing with these Nintendo games is like, is it Smash? Then okay, I'm good. Exactly. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, Game Freaks. These are the guys that actually made Pokemon games. They're coming out with a new RPG. Uh, it's going to be turn based, strategy combat. It's going to be using the Undertale composer, Toby Fox. Now, that's a really good sign to me. Undertale's got great music. Uh, the uh, Fall, they call Fall of Smash. It's like the last part of Smash Brothers is coming out um, for their. their uh, Character packs, I guess, is what you'd call them. I can't, I can't remember what they're called. But anyways, uh, Banjo Kazooie is now released, um, and then we're gonna have Terry from Fatal Fighter was teased for to- November 2019. Um, so my question for you guys: Who would you guys want added to Smash Brothers at this point? Any IP really, but you think we kind of would fit in this fighting style? I got two that I think would be pretty cool. Fire away. Mm. One I know you're gonna love, Pickle Rick. Mm. That'd be interesting. He's a little too adult for this world, Rick? but I'm down. Yeah. I've never heard of him. Well, check, check out my pop, my friend. Yeah, from Rick and Morty. Really? Yeah, he's break a, down what Pickle Rick is. Oh. I, I don't remember the episode. Though, okay, so it. Rick doesn't want to go to the to the ther- therapist. Uh-huh. Rick, uh, where is he at? Sanchez. Sanchez, he's up here somewhere. Anyways, yeah. He doesn't want to go to the therapist, so he turns himself into a pickle. He says it's just to see if he scientifically can. He's underneath the Pickle Rick. Rick. Yeah, yeah. Um, just so he can but the truth is he just didn't want to go to therapy mm-hmm. so then the family leaves him there and he's just a pickle on a cabinet he ends up like rolling down going into a sewer and then he has to figure out a way to survive it's a long story but basically he uses a cockroach to then kill a rat then turn himself into a those like rat skeletons stuff like that so that he can like fight and kill other rats he takes over the rat underworld and eventually you know he fight he helps this one assassin dude and it's an amazing story it's one of their best episodes really pickle rick that's a good option yeah. he's a hell of a good fighter that's really good yeah i figured he's unique and popular and the everything. portals would be neat too if he can get his portal gun yeah which is oh. more of a regular rick thing but the portals would be cool actually yeah you put regular rick in there too yeah <laughs> and he like has an, a move where he like brings in morty and then morty takes a shot and dies or whatever for you <laughs> <laughs> oh that'd be <laughs> hella funny. Yeah, funny oh man uh that's but good. my second one is uh steve from minecraft because I like Minecraft. Ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. And then you can have like upgrade your weapons and, and stuff like where yeah, you go, go and change. Minecraft. Yeah. Which is like your main, your the main Minecraft character. character. Oh. Yeah. And you can have like Damn, different dude. armors and different weapons and summon other creatures or put building blocks in the way and stuff like that's that. That's cool. That one right there. I have an extra figure for all the things you're talking about. Oh, <laughs> hey. what the? That's it. That's Steve okay. from Minecraft. Yeah. Or um, I don't remember what the girl's Aaron or something like that. I think it's the girl version. Brody knows him because he always plays as the girl. Yeah. I don't know. That'd be cool. What are you thinking over there? Who do you want to play as it, Smash Brothers? It could be anything. Anything, yeah. yeah okay. I mean, Minecraft anything. is owned by Microsoft now, so. Anything. All right. Uh, so, um, I would say Gohan from uh, Dragon Ball Z. There you go. There you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He goes like Super Saiyan and then just like. Yeah, Super Saiyan and he does like a little Kamea, like a little pew. pew. Like a little <laughs> bomb. What would his jump back look like? Does he have anything in the... I haven't seen Dragon Ball Z, so forgive me. I know it sounds crazy. Uh, I mean, there's like a, like almost... Not, that's not really a jump back. Like, it makes some. Yeah. However, I would I would like imagine when we're like as he's falling, like whoo, powers up and goes kind of like Star Fox. Yeah, does. yeah. Be kind of cool for him. That would be kind of cool. And then, um, 
Wow, John Blank. There was another anime I just thought of. <sighs> God damn it. Should have wrote it down. I was right, like, you oh, think I got another it. anime, I'll, yeah, I'll no, go with mine. I have it. I just can't remember the name. Just, just pick yours. Okay. I'll, I'll remember. <laughs> I want the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. So, but specifically, I want you to have at least two skins where you go like, okay, yeah, I have modern day Ninja Turtles, but then I want to have the old uh, arcade machine, arcade game version of the Ninja Turtles that you and me were playing yesterday. Yeah. And then you could pick, you know, which weapon you want or which turtle you which could do. Turtle turtle. Be, yeah. But that'd be awesome to have like the old Mikey turtle where he's like actually doing the old moves of the original would be really cool. And uh, yeah, that old arcade style. That'd be neat. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. All right. I remember now. It was yeah. uh, a <laughs> character from Yu Yu Hakusho. I don't know if you guys seen that show. It's mm-hmm. car- anime. It was uh, you, Kurama. He was a Demon's Fox, anyway, person turned into a kid. Anyways, he has a uh, vine power, so like uh, rose whips and stuff like that. I think that would be a cool character. Yeah. Turn into a... If you start leaning into the animes, too, you have like endless characters you could... Yeah, really there's a lot. I'm using. trying to find like my favorite ones. And yeah. I'm not trying to like... Because there's like the main character, Yu Yu Hakusho, he's kind of like Gohan in a way. He has, yeah, like, yeah. You don't want to make the... Yeah, yeah so... Which they're doing a lot of that. The Terry from Fiddle Fury looks just like, you know, a lot of the other fighters. So they they are kind of copying a little bit, feels like to me. I think it'd be good if Smash Brothers just started like like make it uh, a new version that's unlimited or whatever and just keep releasing patches that have more characters. Because, I mean, it, you can make endless characters. Yeah. Not, I'm sure yeah, they're but not you too have complicated. To, yeah, you have to make... I, I wish that they could like join like with Disney and make Disney characters. Yeah. That's yeah, a, I know. But but Disney, they would try to, to make their own Smash Brothers, really. Yeah. yeah. More likely. It would be cool if there was like a Darkwing Duck or uh, Baloo, not Baloo, Tailspin. Yeah. yeah from yeah. Tailspin. Baloo. Yeah. yeah. Where is he at? I just uh, saw him. He's on this side over here. Yeah, he's over there. Oh. But well, you have a, a statue that's not a pop. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I do have one over there. Yeah, there's one over there by Hulk. Oh, yeah, right in the middle. Oh, okay. This is really sounding good for the podcast, by the way. It's <laughs> pointing at action figures on my walls. <laughs> Special VIP thing for our patrons. Yeah, yeah for the watch streamers. Yeah, it's watch. all free. It's not a patron. Oh, okay. Um, actually, a lot of our patron stuff is free, anyways. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next part. The Legend of Zelda Awakening. We got some new gameplay of that that's coming out on September 20th. Now, that's Area 51 Day, so I wonder mm. if there's like some sort of conspiracy. I heard that Area 51 got canceled. Who canceled it? The guy that actually started it. That dude has no power over it anymore. Well, he just said that he's he canceled it. That it was on IGN. Like, sorry guys, I was just joking. They Nobody go. Yeah, it's so beyond him now. There's gonna. I know of people who already have rooms there. Yeah. So it's not like that dude has any power over it. Yeah. And you know the government or somebody probably told him like, hey, you you need to try to shut this down because you're gonna be oh, held yeah. responsible for anything that happens. Oh yeah. Uh, Dragon Quest XI S coming to the uh, Switch September 27th. You can play the whole entire game in either 2D or 3D, which is pretty cool. So you can do like the old school version. Mm-hmm. Uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 coming to the Switch. Now that game was huge a year ago. Uh, very replayable. Did you ever play Original Sin 2? Well, no, no. No. Everybody I knew was playing it, except for you, I guess. Um, and so I'm excited to try that out on the Switch. I think it's actually really going to be a good port for the Switch. Uh we're going to have Doom 64 coming to the Switch. Doom? Ah. Did you guys play Doom 64? I know we had it. I don't know if we played it much. Yeah, I, I, I tried it, and I, I just... Not a fan? Not a fan. I don't understand how people still play that game. Yeah. Squeaks like, was here. He'd be, like, peeing his pants over the excitement. Okay. Uh, now, I really like when they do do 64 uh, ports, because I'm playing Turok on the Switch, and it's, like, yeah. a perfect port. It's a lot of fun. Uh, next up, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, Tokyo 2020. Excitement? A bunch of excitement in the room? No? You're not excited for Olympic Games? No. They've been doing these for a long time now. Uh, this one I, does actually have a cool feature where, again, it does like a 2D thing, but it's like the original like uh, Mario's, or, uh, Super Mario Brothers, Mario doing like a race with like the old Sega Genesis, Sonic, and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. I like that idea that they're, they're changing things up a little bit. Of course, they have 3D as well. Uh, we're having Star Wars Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast. Uh, it's getting released for the Switch. It's kind of a weird one that they decided to do that. Um, and then to me, the biggest news out of all this was Super Nintendo is now joining Nintendo Switch Online. So if you guys aren't familiar, Nintendo Switch Online, you pay $20 a year and then you get access to like a growing NES library you can play on your Switch. Mm-hmm. I play Kirby on there a lot. There's a lot, of good, a lot of good old NES games that we got play on there. They're adding Super Nintendo to that. So uh, with that comes like Super Mario World, which I was just playing this morning, The Legend of Zelda, uh, Link to the Past, F-Zero, which I played a couple days ago and apparently I suck at. Uh, Kirby Dreamland 3. I was actually playing that this morning as well. And then Super Metroid. I've never played that, so I'm going to try that. I'm actually streaming that too. Uh, did they say Donkey Kong? 
I do think a Donkey Kong. If Ooh. not now, will be soon. Because if but I, I do, say... I might actually have to buy it. Because especially my mom, she loves those games. So yeah. I might have to buy it for her. Well, what's cool is it's going to come. It has 20 games now. And they, they used to like regularly every month come out with a new game. They're not going to do it regularly anymore, but they are coming out with more games for it all the time. Uh, 30 bucks, you could actually get the actual Super Nintendo controller for your Switch, too. Oh, okay. So it's like wireless, anything like that. So you could actually play like real old school. Hmm. So you had, you had Donkey Kong. Is there any other games you played on your... I, see, now, uh, I, we were a Genesis. We didn't have Super Nintendo. I think Bomberman was also... Bomberman, I know, is for sure on this. And then uh, uh, Donkey Kong 2. And then um, Super, uh, Mario Kart Racing. That was a big one. I, I know, it's for sure on this as well. That was a big one. Yeah. I was playing a little bit of that. And again, it's one of those things like, I'm just bad at these games. And I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I'm really bad at them. Uh, so I got to get better at that. Uh, before we end our Nintendo event, I think we should discuss the uh, terrible Super Smash Brothers tournament we had. Oh, yeah. That was rough. So, does anybody want to break down what happened? All right, me. <laughs> so, basically, uh, we, we did a tournament, and we had done two tournaments, but the tournament that we actually got everybody into, uh, we had an odd number of people, five people, Cheddar, Squeaks, and then us three. And so, we had to add the robot, and it was, what, Luigi? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Luigi. Yeah. yeah, it was. So, we're going along, and right away, Squeaks, probably the best player of all of us, he gets knocked out. Mm -hmm. So, I was like, oh, it's wide open for the rest of us then. Yeah. Squeaks plays his game too much. It's perfect. Because he was the only one that was, he was the first one that was paired up against the PC. Yeah, he's so, playing against the bot first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I thought, all... I thought he was playing against uh, Cheddar. Oh, maybe that. Maybe the that. Cheddar oh, knocked him okay. out. Yeah, that could be the case. Yeah, uh, Cheddar, we found out, actually does have a Switch at home and is, and is practicing. <laughs> so we found out he's actually kind of good. And we're like, oh, okay. We thought you didn't play much of this, but good uh -huh. to know. And then I'm terrible as we find out because everybody's like, Wait, what's up with your selection? I don't have a lot of people. Like when Brody Brooklyn come over, I add some to it. Um, so yeah, we're going along and stuff like that. And finally, it breaks down to, at the very end, me versus the freaking bot. Okay. And I'm not proud to say this. But the freaking PC beat our entire team. Wait, wait. You yeah. got to bring up the, you accidentally simmed it. The bot won it. And then you're like, Okay, yeah. Wait. So, yeah. So, uh, you could accidentally, I accidentally pressed the wrong button and, and basically canceled out of me playing my guy. Yeah. And so it automatically made the robot win. So, I'm like, well, let's set this up again. So then it was me versus the robot Luigi. And yeah, the robot Luigi won it. Yeah, the game knew. The, the game, game knew. knew. Yeah, he says, these guys don't deserve to win. <laughs> so all five of us basically lost a tournament against freaking robot, not set to hard difficulty. Yeah. It was just like normal difficulty. We were just hitting our heads against the wall. See, if I had the Wii Fit girl, I probably would have won it. I'm annoyed at how good you are with that stupid <laughs> Wii Fit girl. I think we should try to figure, either have even numbers next time or try to figure a way to do the tournament without using the tournament setting. Or yeah, like we should have just done it on paper. But we yeah. were we were like, oh, let's try out this tournament thing because it does yeah. it for you. It's a night and a little effect and stuff like that. Yeah. And we thought the bot would be just kind of a freebie. Yeah. No, we didn't know that the bot was going to run us over. Me, me and Squeaks played against the bot in one of because it broke down to three on three or on three, whatever. Oh, that's and the first time we did it was three on three and we, yeah. the bot was in there. And he, we thought, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll both kill out the bot. But yeah, I was like, oh, I'm going to help the bot take him out so yeah. I can get a little bit ahead and then I'll kill out the bot. <laughs> Tana's over there trying to no, hold his <laughs> we, we both lost to the bot. It was so sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that damn guy is pretty good. Yeah, I think it's Luigi. I think it was the problem is Luigi did it. So that was we were supposed to take pictures and, and video of that event, but I think I'm happy we didn't because this <laughs> little little bit right here may be edited out even yeah. <laughs> of how bad things went. So that was so that's everything for Nintendo Direct, guys. Um, anything you guys would want to see from the past brought back from Nintendo? Again, this is one of my surprise questions. Uh, for me, Diddy Kong Racing. Why yeah, the hell is that not brought say. back? That was one of them that we played a lot too. Oh, Diddy yeah. Kong Racing, Star Fox. Uh, that was a deep game. Like Diddy Kong Racing, you could beat it and then find out like those, you could beat it all the way once, then you have to beat it again, and then you could unlock the spaceship, mm -hmm. which opened up a space level. Like we have multiple space levels yeah. and the rooster character. The rooster yeah. character is a hard, hard one to unlock. And you're like, how are those not part of the whole game that everybody gets to play? You gotta... but that's what I love. That game was like super deep. You had yeah. to actually like really play a lot of it to get it. Hmm. But yeah, I can't think of any other N64 games that were really that. I never or, had it. Or, or, or any or old Nintendo, Nintendo game you want you brought yeah. back. Well... Like I said, Donkey Kong. Like if if they do come out or planning on it, hopefully Donkey Kong comes out. Cause would you want to see a new Donkey Kong or the original? Brother? Original. Yeah. I, I loved playing the original. The first one and the second one were awesome. And then I think I was you were watching when I was streaming that. I, I was terrible yeah, yeah. with that shit, dude. That's funny. It's a tough game. And then uh, Lion King. I, I played the Lion oh, King game. Oh, it's kind of like boring, but it's like dude. it was cool. That the, level the music was the best part. Yeah, I, I want to yeah. be a king. Uh, level was purposely made extra hard because the game direct game developers needed to kind of buy some time. Yeah, so they made that level like almost impossible to beat. Yeah, or like like it was really hard because like you had to memorize 
the patterns to be able to get back yeah. up like the monkeys throwing you yeah so um yeah that's a good one though that's a really good one and then i remember i had that and aladdin came with like a two-pack yeah the aladdin was good it's like a a b b c c just get to the, uh, next i level. still have like donkey kong on my super nintendo because i also bought fc twin so it plays nintendo yeah. and super nintendo i have like little mermaid and all that stuff too. yeah that's cool was, we gotta cool. have you do some retro rewinds in for us it's good stuff all right, next up, we're going to be going over the Apple events and all the cool new stuff coming from Apple. Expensive new stuff, basically. All right, so at the Apple event, they announced an iPhone, an iWatch, an iPad, Apple TV, and Apple Arcade. All right, we're going to break these down. Did they happen to explain why when I update my phone, it gets bugs and I can't use it anymore? Or why everything has to slow down as things update? That's yeah, so irritating. that's interesting. I mean, I figured eventually they'd eliminate that, but I don't know. No, you know, I think they're making money somehow. Huh, yeah, that's, that's weird. Crazy. That's they wouldn't be greedy like that, though. No, that's no. not They're their style. very down to earth, good people. Right. These are nice people. Okay. So they don't want money. Douchebags. All right. Let's go over <laughs> iPhone. Uh, first off, it's called iPhone 11, which pisses me off so much. Yeah. Because last one was an X, right? And last like one was an X. And I have an iPhone 8. Yeah. So I want an iPhone 9 or I want an iPhone. Stop calling them numbers. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not moving so fast. Right. So iPhone 11. Mm-hmm. And if you have that collector edition iPhone 9, let me know. Um, it has all the normal stuff, stronger glass, faster, brighter, clear. Uh, the new colors are purple, green, yellow, white, black, and Project Red. I have Project Red of mine. I love Project Red. It's great. Um, it has this new spatial audio. It's supposed to create sound around you. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's kind of like a little bit of a theater Yeah, effect. when you're recording, right? Or no, when you're watching something. Oh, okay. Because I know they did that for recording, too. Now, oh, okay. actually, like... When you're recording a video, it actually plays a sound on the like footstep, like you can hear exactly. Oh wow! Yeah, pinpoints it. That's cool. So yeah. this means that this the phone probably has speakers on both ends of it now. Yeah, it looks like it has a series of five speakers throughout. It's kind of like pointing in different directions. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I watch a lot of YouTube on my I phone. Get tired of so cupping the back side of my phone. Same. I always cut the bottom, so it's yeah. kind of like you know a little louder. Um. <laughs> They have slow-mo selfies now, and this irritates me because they're like, slow-mo selfies, and they're trying to pitch the name Slofies. Mm-hmm. I was just like, guys, don't try to be cool. Don't feed into the stupidity that don't is Don't feed into it. It'll, just, it'll take off. Trust <laughs> yeah. me. You're good. Uh, and then I'll have this new camera. It has two cameras on the back, but the new one is this ultra-wide with 120-degree view. I think that's fantastic. I actually really like that. That would be really good for us yeah. right now if trying to film this podcast. That's cool. It's like a panoramic shot without, uh, without, p- without moving. Yeah, and it's not distorted either. It's not yeah. like distorted like a lot of shots. They did a really good uh, example with it with this like canyon thing, uh, and then the last bit on this iPhone 11 is that it has one hour longer battery. Holy cow! Wow. No, I heard it was four hours That's longer the other one. than the. We're coming up on that one. Oh, sorry. No. That's the plus or the pro. Oh, okay. But this is just the basic iPhone 11. So it's only one more hour, and they're like, "Oh, advertising it," and people are start cheering. Wow. How like many, an hour is not going to buy you shit. Like how many hours did they have before? As long as it makes I think it's me like eighteen f- from the morning to the night. Like if I can get home, plug it in before I go to bed, I'm good. Yeah, I would like one that just lasts like three days. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, it, like that way you can kind of have it in your pocket and like you know what? I forgot to charge my phone, but I'm not screwed tomorrow. You, you know, you, you know what they should really develop and have on every single phone is the back is just a solar panel. You set your phone wow, face down and it's charging. Idea. Why yeah. is that not thought of before? I, people should buy that phone I'm as long as it was an iPhone. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, I was also seeing that um, the face camera when your phone's laying down it's able to kind of capture in an angle your face so it can automatically like oh i didn't hear that yeah oh that's smart let's watch it and stuff that's pretty good uh next up we have the okay so that one's gonna be 700 bucks Mm. that's a small one the iphone 11 pro the fancy one is stainless steel which i really like that that's Mm. cool uh go ahead i was gonna say they could start making titanium casing because titanium is a lot lighter it is more expensive. But yeah, the normal ones are aluminum, so this was kind of uh, actually yeah. heavier than I guess. Uh, the next one's it's going to be midnight green, space gray, silver, and gold. It's going to have the 5.8 inch screen for the Pro and 6.5 for the Pro Max, which is so dumb because it's like you have the 11, and then you have the Pro, then you have the Max. Like, oh, come on now, guys. Uh, it's going to have what they're calling a Super Retina XDR display, four to five hours longer battery. It's going to have three cameras on the back. Uh, so you have the ultra wide one that's added with the 11 and then you have this new one called telephoto, uh, camera. And then the price point for this thing for the pro a thousand bucks pro max, 1100 bucks come in September 20th. Uh, all right. Next up we have the, uh, new iWatch. Now, Jonathan, you're an iWatch owner. So you're going to be our mm-hmm. voice on this one. Uh, this one now has always on. So even if your arms linked like this or whatever, you'll still be able to kind of peek over and see what it is, but it's dim. Mm-hmm. So it's never off. I like that. Mm-hmm. Depending um, on how, how much that sucks up your battery life though. Apparently longer better than the last one. Yeah. So somehow they figured that out. 
uh, a bunch of new finishes and cases. The uh, is called the Series Five. It's gonna be four hundred dollars non cellular, five hundred dollars with cellular. How do you like your your iWatch? I really don't wear it. I yeah, have really? it it's sitting at home. It's sitting on my nightstand. I could wear it today. I might be afraid to ruin it. That was my first thing is I didn't want to wear it to work because I get greasy and I do, you know, I work on, you know, a lot of stuff. So I don't want to damage it. So I just right, wouldn't right. wear it to work. But then you know, I got to the, I quickly got to the point that I wouldn't use it on the weekends either, especially when you know, my phone broke not too long ago. So I'm using a different phone. So it wasn't synced up. And, and then I had a hard time syncing it to my old phone when it started having issues. And then the new phone now, I was like, I'm not going to sit here and fight with the damn thing just so that I could see a text sure. message on my wrist. Like that's all I would use it for is see my texts and emails and calls, you know, on my wrist when they come in. Other than that, I mean, I can just pull my phone out. It's not not the end of the world. It looks cool. Everyone's like, oh, man, you got an Apple Watch. But really, to me, what looks a lot better is the the new Samsung watches, the round ones. Yeah. They look they look slick. They look and they more got, watchy, too. Yeah, and they got the dial on the outside, so you can, you know, the the uh, Apple Watch has a little dial on the side. Mm-hmm. You, but I think the Samsung ones look better, so. All right, next up, <laughs> um, iPad. It's going to be the seventh generation of iPad. 10.2 inch Retina display, uh, 320 bucks. So I thought it was a pretty fair price. I think that's pretty good for an iPad. Yeah. Um, and this one it shows a lot of stylus use. It's gonna be like it looks like it's gonna be more for like the creative people that are always drawing stuff like that. Mm. I am highly due for an iPad upgrade. I'm using the original Retina display mm. iPads, so I'm ready for this. So I'm, I think I'm using like third generation. But do you think you have much use for a stylus than the way that you use it though? I I would use a stylus more. Uh, I think if I had one, I, I would. I would want. I had. A, I have a stylus for mine, but they're not meant for for styluses. Um, I would use a stylus a lot though mm-hmm. if I had one on there. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm excited for that. Uh, then we had some announcements from Apple TV. It's coming November first. Uh, new devices that you get, like if you get a new iPad or whatever, it comes with a year free of it. Hmm. It'll be five bucks a month. That's not bad. That's cheap. As long as they got some, you know, semi good content to watch once in a while. So far, no. <laughs> from, <laughs> they did show off a trailer for uh, a new show called C S E E, like if you're seeing somebody, uh, starring Jason Momoa, and it features like this post-apocalyptic world where everybody's blind, oh, except for these two yeah. kids that are, these like twins are born that can see. Mm. And so it's all about like trying to keep these kids safe, and you know it's got uh, Viola cool. Davis. Yeah, it sounds cool until you're watching it, and then you're like. They're doing like a lot of stuff with like running through the forest and like all kinds of like it's like, it's like this cool adventure story, but then the whole time you're like, yeah, but they're all blind. So how the hell is this happening? Yeah, where's the ha- where's the uh, fear from other people because they're everybody's blind. So I think I'm gonna be watching this show. I will watch five bucks a month. You might as well. Yeah, uh, I'll probably be watching this and be th- the whole time just bugged, but like, yeah, but why are you doing that? Why are you doing this? You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it wouldn't make sense to me. Yeah, I don't know. Thinking what was that movie that came out that was pretty hot for a minute with uh, Angelina Jolie. Where she's blind? Yeah. Where uh, everybody had to put blindfolds yeah, on? That was Bird Box, but it was Angela. Oh, yeah. Bird Box. Jolie. No, yeah. Who Sandra Bullock. Sandra, Sandra Bullock. Bullock. That's Bullock. what I meant. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. That's a, <laughs> uh, that's a hell of a good movie, though. That was um, a good movie. Yeah. But yeah, something kind of like that where, you know, but there was the the other people that weren't blindfolded that went crazy. crazy. So yeah. that was the fear that made you keep moving. Yeah. So maybe there'll be some kind of monster or, or those creatures like in uh, A Quiet Place, that kind of. Yeah. Something they have to stay away from. But th- but this one, they're just all blind. It's not like there's creatures to stay away. It's about tribal fighting because this is these kids that you can see now. Oh. And so they're all fighting to like get these kids on their side or kill or the kids. Like, uh, children so, children of men. Or... A lot of people think that because there's a post-apocalyptic world that vision is what led to us having a post-apocalyptic. Like we built big machines and stuff like that and it was their fault. Hmm. So um, it'll be interesting. Like I said, five bucks a month is worth a shot. Yeah, not this I don't think I spend that money. I'm too cheap. Yeah, <laughs> and you can't share my account, Daniel. Shake my fist at you. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna happen. Uh, next up, we have. And there's another five bucks. It's gonna be spent. Apple Arcade. It's gonna be a library of mobile games. It's gonna be expanding through over time. Uh, coming out September 15th. It's also five dollars a month. The first month will be free, and uh, you can play offline. You could share with up to five different family members. So we're all family here. Uh, we will review. Uh, so we're going to, I'm going to get this. I'm going to play some of these games and we'll review this service uh, in three weeks. My plans. So nice. Uh, you guys think that you guys would want to get a subscription service to mobile games? No, no, no. I don't even, I, I don't even play mobile games on my phone. I like the way you leaned into that one. Like you just give like, <laughs> I had to make sure like, giving all, giving, no, uh, sir. No, <laughs> no, hell, hell no. I hate mobile games. Yeah. I'm a PC gamer slash console kind of fall off console but anyways i can't i can't see why people spend so much money on handheld games like the little phone games yeah. it's just a waste of money 
Yeah, like people just they, I played some good ones. Way too much. They're money. just not as engaging as the games that you're used to. That's yeah, the, that's the yeah. problem to me. I could see and it. I could just wait to get home to play my games. Yeah, yeah. Because you put on your headset, you got a big monitor in front of you. Yeah. You know, your controls are your you know, both hands. I got my hands, buddies there, nobody. so I'm just most of the time just chilling, talking to them. Yeah. A lot, a lot of times I just sit on my desk, just talking to my friends. I'm not yeah. even playing games. True. Yeah. The downside is I think there's a lot more money in mobile games because oh, it is. There is. Yeah. yeah. That's, a lot of microtransactions. That's why uh, yeah, exactly. Konami split and canceled all their products yeah. that was coming out. Projects, yeah. Because they knew that the the money was more into the mobile gaming. So but how, how do we as a consumer push them back the other direction? Uh, don't buy. Don't buy those games or don't. But there's a generation them. growing right now where that's just the norm. Yeah. And so we can't we can't beat that. We we have to be smart about you know the stuff we do. And then right now like GameStop. Is closing down over 200 stores or something yeah. like that. Uh, so whichever stores aren't. I mean, doing... I have five within 10 miles. I mean, they can close a couple. Yeah, of them but um, I mean, it's getting to the point that after after another year, it's even gonna just decline. Because right now, I'm like, well, GameStop kind of pisses me off. So it's like, I could just download the game on my Xbox. It'd be easier. And it's so it's so much easier that it's when you dump in it, you delete it, and they're like, oh, I'm getting itch for it again. You just download it again and you go. It's feel, right there. I feel like GameStop has to do more. I know we're off topic, but I, I feel like they should do more to reward you for going. Yeah. Like, give you more discounts. Like, you buy a new game, guess what? Next time you come in, you're going to get 10 bucks off that next game. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree with you. More, uh, not, more promotions. Not, not a pre-owned game. I mean, like, a new game. They got to do stuff like that or you're never going to – you're not going to make any more money. They're talking about – they have already talked about they're going to bring comic books in. Which I don't, th- I don't like that because I don't think comic books should be globally and, done. Like I think it should yeah. be something that's done per local comic book shops. That's why we always release our comic book shop, you know, warning basically every Wednesday. Yeah, but right now we don't have that many comic book shops in El Grove. We have one, but they're t- they're all in about Yu Gi Oh cards. They're not really yeah, selling no comics. And, and kind of magic, but that's why yeah, I'm yeah. like, hmm. The Lodi one is really good. Launchpad Comics. You guys are in Lodi, uh, California. If you go up to Sacramento, Oblivion Comics is really good. So those are your, those are our two comic book shops that I think we mostly frequent. Oh. So, all right. Uh, next up, we're gonna be going over to Squeaks for our It Chapter Two review and then Gears Five review. <laughs> Next up, we have It Chapter 2, and I'm with Squeaks on this one. How you been, Squeaks? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing, Frank? Doing all right. Doing okay. Uh, okay, so It Chapter 2, we already did the spoiler free review. This one is all spoilers. We're going to let you guys know every little detail. Um, overall, though, what was your feeling with this movie? Um, <clears throat> Let's see. Okay, so my feeling was I thought it was neat because we start starting to see more of a, a raging, violent kind of It. Yeah. Um, but overall with the movie, it was super disappointing, uh, kind of upsetting comparing to the first one. When you have the first one, it's so great. And then you watch this one, you're like, what happened? What? what? The same director, right? And you're like questioning it. And then, yeah. yeah, overall. But I did like some, some things, and we'll get into that. Yeah, it really is the same team. So, uh, you know, it's. I think I think the problem is, is they split it up into two movies. They were about to split it into three, actually. They actually were debating about putting that last one into three movies. Yeah. Which would have been really awful. You could tell where the split would be, but where they have to go, like collect the Horcruxes, basically, and then have to go from there. Um, yeah, I just didn't like the format. But uh, overall, yeah, it was a good movie. The problem is, is you're comparing it to the first one, which was like too yeah. perfect. It was really, really good, and it surprised everybody. So we have that. But the Pennywise is still awesome. Uh, we have some amazing scenes with him. Uh, but let's go ahead and we'll break down. We'll go over plot, acting, directing, then we'll go special effects, stuff like that. And then if okay. there's anything you want to bring up in each of these, any, t- any moments you liked or disliked, just mention it now. And at the end, we'll kind of go over our thoughts uh, on little tidbits here and there, okay? Got it. Okay, so with the story, with the plot, why don't you run down kind of a real broad strokes of what happened in this movie? Like, give it like a three-minute rundown. Uh, they grow up and they all move. Most of the kids move out of town except for one of them. So while these, not kids anymore, adults... Right. Uh, are moved out they kind of forget lost memory of what happened in Derry. so they get a phone call from that 
that one i'm forgetting the name sorry if you know it then let it's me mike. know mike 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 okay so mike calls them all tries to get them together because he's staying in that town and he still knows what's going on and what happened so they he tries to bring them all back because the promise they made in the first movie of if it comes back we will kill it right he gets everyone back and then they try to do um they try to counter him, and then when they find him, they try to do a multi, whatever a a ritual way of killing it. Um, also, what they're doing is kind of remembering everything that happened to them in the first movie. Also, what we don't get to see in the uh, first movie, so they kind of expanded that a little bit, kind of like a one point five um, with some of these. Uh, each person had a, a flashback. Yeah, that's right. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, um, that was kind of jarring to me as well. Like, because it wasn't in, like, so my reference to this isn't that I read the book. I wish I had, but it was the old movie, which they didn't have that. They really felt like they're adding more story that they didn't need to add myself. Yeah. Agree. And it, and it took a bunch of time to go through each each person, too. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like, this movie doesn't have to be this long. Right. So at the end of the day, they, whatever try to do whatever ritual they were going to do to stop it. Turns out that didn't work and they find another way to way to kill him. I try yeah. to run it down real quick, but then just <laughs> not so deep into it. Cause I know we'll dive into it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I didn't care for it. Like again, uh, going off the old movie, the old Tim Curry movie, it started off with them being adults. And then all the, the first movie we got through flashbacks, basically, and mm-hmm. it was a way that, like, each time Mike would call, they would flash back to the beginning part of their childhood and meeting up with the losers. And then by the time he got to the, all of them, they had, like, the group, and then it would re- keep referring back to them as they were, like, adventuring together. Mm-hmm. Uh, personally, I think that was a better layout. This one, we had that part without the flashback aspect. Then it was like, well, let's make more movies. And then while we're flashing back, it's always like, oh, I'm flashing back to a time I was afraid post Pennywise, which is really weird to me. Right? Wasn't all the flashbacks after Pennywise was already defeated? Because they kept thinking, like, oh, it's fake, it's fake. Yeah, yeah, it was, actually. So then why were they being, like, haunted? Hmm, maybe still. I don't know. I guess he was still active, apparently, right? That's when so he went crazy. down the well. But yeah, there's, there's, there's some things wrong that you compared to the first one. Um, with that, like, he's supposed to be down in the well and he doesn't mm-hmm. haunt them anymore. Okay, so what about when they explain that he comes back every 27 years and kills children? Right. Well, f- clearly the first killing in this movie was not a child. So what are yeah. we doing here? <laughs> yeah, that was a so. that was a grown adult. And yeah, he's he was way more aggressive the second time around, which I do like how aggressive he was. Yeah. But that's not that. Pennywise. You know, it just yeah. felt weird. Yeah. So yeah, so every time uh, somebody would like look back at a moment they were scared, um, they would have this, you know, uh, uh, maybe they were outside and the, the lumberjack was attacking them or whatever. Yeah. And then they would come to the current day and they were still being attacked by something else that was similar to it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so if that was how the first movie played out, I think I would have liked it better. I see what they were trying to do, but it just felt kind of overdone, you know? Yeah. And then you said Pennywise was great in this, or you made a comment of him, but Mm -hmm. also at the same time, we don't see as much Pennywise as we did in the first one. All we're seeing is it being these images of what they're scared of or whatever the case may be for them. So, It's like, oh, man, Skarsgård was your star in this first one, and now you're cutting his time away? I'd rather see more of that clown image. It was way less clown, more extra bad guys. Yes. That I felt were like, we'll talk about it in visual effects, but, I mean, overall, they Mm -hmm. kept showing him in the daylight, and that's not how you scare people. It's always in the dark is when we're scared, you know? Yeah. You don't don't need a bunch of gore to scare us. Like the old Halloween movie, one of the best horror films ever made, uh, you just had Michael walking. That was it. Yeah. It scared the shit out of you because that was awesome. (laughs) Um, Yep. All right. So, and then what did you think of the, uh, the new little kid story? Like, oh, I got to protect this kid. He's kind of a Georgie replacement. What, how did you feel about that? What? uh, Oh shoot. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. The skateboarding kid and tell him don't go to the carnival. Yeah. 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 Um, that, that didn't bother me as well because I mean, like going back to the first one, they said that they attack kids. Um, or he attacks kids every every twenty seven years, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like okay, we interacted because we're trying to stop him from killing more kids. But it also, what's its focus right now in this number two? Is it killing those adults that are trying to kill him, or are you 
going for more kids. At that point, you have these adults that are trying to kill you. So I understand in the beginning of the movie, before the adults came together, that's what you're doing. You're going on your rampage. Yeah. But now it's like, well, you know, uh, I kind of just jumped for me everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would have been better if, if when it came back, it was focused on getting back at the losers. So it would sit there and like attack like any kind of family they had in town. Or I don't know, like it had a vendetta would be kind of cool. Like, oh, it's a, it's the yeah. first time it came back. It actually had a purpose. Like yeah. that would have been cool. Well, what what do you think about the kid? I thought he was kind of hamstrung, and I, I get that it's a Georgie replacement. They really leaned on that pretty heavy. Although, yeah. I mean, again, spoiler alert for everything, his death was freaking awesome. <laughs> oh, for death. sure. Yeah. <laughs> that that visual effect of uh, that scene where you have uh, James McAvoy hitting on one side and it just smashing his head on the other side, like which is going to break through and you could tell like which one's winning. And uh, yeah. just his like devour and the, the blood splatter is like, yeah, that was a really awesome kill. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> um, I don't think it hit James enough though after that. Like uh, afterwards he was kind of like, well, we have to beat it. And I get that, but it was like, I guess he's numb at that point, really, is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so how do you think they're... So, continue with the plot, and we're going towards the end of the movie, just story-wise. The way they finished it off, I didn't care for myself. Like, I get that you're shaming him and belittling him. Yeah. But the way they're like, oh, we go through here, it'll make him smaller. And then, oh, that didn't work really fast. It didn't work all of a sudden. And so then they're like, well, there's another way to make him smaller. And then, like, let's just shame, shame, shame until he's in a corner, and then we'll smash him or whatever. What did you think of all that? It makes sense for the fact that it is your fears and what you make it. So if you're not yeah. really scared of anything, then it's not anything. But uh, for as a fan and a moviegoer, I'm like, that's that's not very climatic to me. So Yeah. <laughs> like, even if it makes sense, you're like, yeah. mm, I wanted more than that. <laughs> I think um, I think he looks better. We'll go back. We'll go with that. that uh, in special effects, we'll talk about that. I think okay. he looked better. So it was a cooler fight visually. But the way it ended, it kind of felt like that's the lesson you guys learned in the first movie. Do something different this one. We already know that you guys know that showing that he's not, you're not afraid of him is a key. Um, and then like, oh, we'll just, you know, now we're not afraid of him, but we'll add bullying into this fight. And so now we yeah. can bully him into <laughs> dying. Uh, I think it would have been great if the one that I can't remember his name, but the asthma kid was like, this is real uh, and Eddie. throws a spike. Yeah. Yeah. If that yeah. was his finish would have been sweet. Like that would have been perfect to me. It would have been you have your weakest character tri being triumphant, and it mm -hmm. would have just been a good finish, you know. So I don't know. I I agree. And then, um, well, okay, I'll wait until we go to special effects. But I agree. <laughs> it's hard because there was a it lot just of wasn't, it. This it was movie. Very, yeah, it just wasn't very climatic for the ending. Yeah. All right. Next off, we're gonna go over to acting. We have acting characters and dialogue. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go through the actors, and you tell me what you think of them, okay? Jessica, okay. Jessica Chastain playing older Beverly. How'd you think? What do you think? Um, about? A uh, little, she seems so, I mean, I guess this might be her role and maybe she did a good job on it because mm -hmm. maybe made me believe it, but so desperate. But if that's what yeah. she was going for, then I didn't mind her at all, actually. I think she did good because, yeah, you're right. It was just like desperation, but I think that is Beverly's situation where she's, yeah, she's holding them together a lot of times when like maybe you have like Bill who's like, I don't really need the, like he does need the group and he's the leader, but she's kind of like also dealing with two different guys and. And fighting for everything. Like that yeah. scene, I didn't like that aspect when we have the um, drowning scene and then like uh, Bill's in the basement. I didn't like all those scenes. I think that was 20 minutes you could have cut out of the movie. Uh, yeah, I agree. But her drowning scene, like her acting in that moment was super believable to me. I thought she really did a hell of a good job there. Yeah, I had I really have no complaints for her at all. Yeah. All right, so James McAvoy, he's a legend. Him playing Bill. Uh, what would you think of uh, of James? Uh, he just knows everything he does to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even though if I might not like his role or how he was portrayed, but he, he knows how to do everything. His, his stuttering. It's like, man, do you stutter in real life? <laughs> like, yeah. He just knows how to nail it. He turns all. it on. It's unreal. It's, it's just freaking yeah. crazy. All right. Bill Hader. He's one of my favorite actors. Uh, he's playing Richie. What'd you think about Bill? Uh, oh gosh, right. I mean, uh, Richie, he's, Richie, he's Richie. the one that's oh, always the joking around the comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, God, uh, I guess it's fine. He's that comedic relief, but then there was a little too much comedic relief, and we'll we'll go that to the next one. So, yeah, um, yeah, I I don't really have any issues with him. I I have one 
I mean, coming up soon. I don't know if I have so much with the acting, but I have so much of the roles that they uh, that they played as. Well, this this is the time. Let's go ahead and break those down. Then, if you're if you're talking okay. about roles, this is where we're talking about characters and okay. and all acting. So, uh, his role, you didn't care for that because I, I thought he did a pretty good job. No, of showing his that role comedy's is fine. a mask. His role is fine. Uh, we're gonna get it to someone else and. I'll, I'll explain that. But he was fine with having that one person that's comedic relief. But from going to the first movie that had like minor uh, comedy be- that kind of just flowed well, this one was really forced. Of, see, like yeah. we need to show something in – or we need to shove something in there to, I don't know, get a smile on the audience because it's a scary movie, which it wasn't really that scary. But uh, every, not every movie has to have this comedic relief in a horror, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I was okay with him. Uh, it's Eddie. Well, I, hopefully, if you get next to Eddie next, yeah, we'll, I have issues. Oh, we'll go to him next then. Uh, okay. Yeah, I like him a lot just because uh, it's hard because I am a Bill Hader fan. But yeah. I, like I said, I think he did a really good job of showing that uh, Bill just – or that uh, Richie just uses that comedy as like a front for like yeah. his real personality. So I think that Bill has a good way of showing both sides. Like if you watch Barry or something like that, one of his famous mm-hmm. shows, a good ability to switch sides like that. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and go right to Eddie next. Jane, uh, James Ranson, that's a cool name, he plays Eddie. Now, now, what would you think of this? You got some complaints. So, yes, at first I was fine because he is um, uh, being, I don't know, whatever, grown up as an insurance person. But he still had, uh, one, he looks just like Eddie as a young kid. Yeah. Uh, but I was fine until he started being more of a comedic guy. And uh, then yeah. I was like, okay, we don't need two people going back and forth with the with the laughs this whole time. And I get that he's like serious, funny, but it's still like la- the last scene. He's like, oh, I got one more thing to say before I die. Oh, well, I fucked your mother. I'm like, oh my god, really? Like, this is it. You have a giant clown spider, and and we're, <laughs> you know, like we're talking yeah. jokes this whole time. It's like you guys are so. This is so stupidly written. So I didn't like how he was trying to. They made him. Um, kind of be a comedy person also. And he has some dumb ass scenes where, uh, when he went downstairs in the medicine room and then mm-hmm. the, that monster was throwing up on him. Yeah. What a stupid ass time to play that music that would make me laugh, you know? Yeah. But yeah. the music they were playing while he was getting thrown up on, like, what am I watching right now? This is a joke. Um, it, it this movie, oh my God. Okay. Poorly because written, it's with yeah. him in it. It's literally felt like the Wayne's brothers picked it up and did a spoof <laughs> God. on it. Oh man. It, it's yeah. yeah, God anyway. But that's how I feel with Eddie. I liked him with uh, before all that. Some of the scenes were kind of weird like uh, that one I just described, but also when he got stabbed in the cheek and oh, yeah. um it was I don't know, did that feel weird to you at all? Was it just like, oh that's kind of a coincidence yeah. and now he's super fine. No, super I think fine. it was yeah, a lot of like on, just but... tacked on stuff. To me, this movie yeah. could have been a good 20, 30 minutes shorter. And I think that was one of the moments where it just kind of felt like we didn't need this for the, mo- the story to keep going. And I want the story to hurry the hell up. So yeah, it's just kind of in the way. And what like, what you think of Eddie? I, I was okay with him, but I didn't really pay attention to him. And I think that's so with Richie and Eddie, the way the two work off of each other, you have like the comedy guy and the straight, the straight man. So the straight man uh-huh. in a comedy do their job is to be the, the reaction to the joke. Right. And I yeah. always felt that that was Eddie's job, but you're right. Yeah. Like as things went on, he started to try to crack his own jokes and that breaks up a comedy duo. So yeah. it, it kind of lands, everything lands wrong. Then it makes Richie's jokes even sound worse. Like, cause, cause he yeah. doesn't have anybody about he's bouncing off of. So I see what you're saying there. Yeah. He, he kind of felt like he was out of place or he was like trying too hard almost. Yes, for Weird. sure. All right, let's go ahead and go to uh, Isaiah Mustafa plays uh, Mike. Now he's the one that called everybody into town. I think he did a good job, and I haven't seen him in a lot of things, so it was good to see uh, kind of a new face. Yeah, I, I have no issues with uh, with him at all. I think he was totally fine. He didn't he didn't do nothing that outstand, like be like, oh, holy shit, who is this guy? But I mean, he was just there, medium, I guess you could say. Like, wasn't bad. It wasn't like anything outstanding, like uh, uh, James James. I don't know how you say his last name? Yeah, McAvoy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's he's kind of the guy that just he's the one that keeps down holds in the fort. Like everybody loses their memories, and he's the one that still has his memories because he stayed in Derry, and so he has to kind of yeah. fill in the gaps until everybody gets their memories back. I think he did a fine job. It's one of those things where you you almost have to try to mess it up. So I think he did. I think he did good. Yeah, uh, he didn't have any scenes that I was pissed off about, like like Eddie that I just went on went on a rant on. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, we'll go. We'll get through these next ones pretty quick here. We'll just go with the adults too. Uh, let's go. With Jay Ryan. He played Ben, which is the chunky kid that grew up handsome. 
Uh, yeah. Um, who are your thoughts uh, I thought he was fine, and then we just get to the scene where he wants to read that poem out loud while he's sinking in the <laughs> yeah. dirt, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I, I'm going to admit, I liked that scene, because I was like, Did oh, you? he's finally doing it good. <laughs> Summer this is fire. true love. Oh, true love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It's a great time to fall in love when a clown's trying to yeah. get it. No, but uh, I was a bit of a sucker for that. What did you think about his acting? Yeah, okay. Uh, I thought he's fine. Who is he from? Anything else? That you know, he's heck of familiar. Let me let me look it up real fast while yeah. we're talking. Um, uh, but I thought he was fine. Like I said, he uh, or oh, like the last guy, he wasn't um so outstanding, but he wasn't so bad. Um, he was kind of just there. No one really did an outstanding job except for James, and um, that's how I feel with this these actors in this one. Yeah, he's been on like a bunch of little things. Mm, okay. A ton of little things, actually. He's on Xena. Wow, that's cool. Xena. He looks like you play like a DC CW character. He really does. That's why I'm surprised he's not <laughs> one of Arrow's villains. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, he's, he's the be. next Arrow, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. All right. So let's wrap things up with I think the guy who could do no wrong, Bill Skarsgård playing Pennywise. Yeah. Only problem was there wasn't enough of him. Yeah, which uh, you know if that's a good good testament to his acting. Yeah, and then I'm sure we'll get to uh, visuals right after, yeah. but there's just there was more of the visuals without him. All I wanted, I guess, we got to see him on a scale. What do you what do you call that? You know, kind of like when the Ruffalo, if I say his name right, with the Hulk. Yeah, Mark it's Ruffalo. a lot of animated with his with his face. But honestly, the best part of it and Skarsgård is just him doing his thing, dressed up. We don't need any visuals. Yeah, matter of fact, when they add things to him, which they did a good job in the mirror room, but that's one I can remember them do, adding a lot to him. Um, yeah. Or anytime he does like that big bite effect, which is an yeah. it thing. Uh, but even in the old one, that was always when it looked the worst. And it's like when you just have him doing that smile, which he did on a, a Colbert interview, which is like that, that shit's real. That yeah. weird smile <laughs> is his. Uh, but when he does yeah. that and he lets one eye drift, also one of his things, it's like, yeah. oh, that chills right to the bone. It's perfect. Yeah, and I, I'm okay with the big bite things because it's only that visual at the very end after he does all his acting. Yeah, but when you true. had the end of the movie, like this uh, post apocalypse fucking Terminator shit with the lights <laughs> flashing everywhere <laughs> yeah. and whatever, yeah. and and it's like him just in this uh, 3D or CGI form. Uh, it's kind of like, man, I just miss it being creepy as hell instead of this, you know, big spider. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I did like in the in the House of Mirrors part. It was heavy CGI, but the way he was like looking up that that big uh, window yeah. there, yeah. that was such a good scene. <laughs> it wasn't scary. It was just awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go ahead and go into uh, special effects and CGI then, since that was a big part of this movie. Um, okay, let's go this way. Was there any CGI moments you thought were done very well? Ah oh, shit, man! I guess it really would be that Funhouse one, huh? The Funhouse one, one I think that... was done well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they uh, they had one scene where the balloons were coming over the bridge. Is actually in the initial uh, kill. Yeah. All yeah. those balloons. That was like just amazing visuals. Yeah, that was that was neat. I think uh, if I went even smaller than that, just having him reaching out to that uh, guy in the first initial kill with yeah. the yellow bright eyes. I know it's super tiny CGI, but it was kind of neat. It was kind of creepy because it was still very minimal. Yeah. Um, and him, I know it's probably. No one thinks about that because it's so tiny, but I thought it was pretty neat. It's the little things, though, that, that kind of like just even with the sound or something like that, when you get that, just a few hits of the piano that are his like song that gets yeah. you. It's those little visuals sometimes capture the movie. Uh, I think, OK, so they weren't great overall, but that final battle scene when he's like half spider. If you're mm -hmm. not familiar with the last it movie, that looks like garbage. But compared to the last yeah. it movie, that looks amazing because they oh, still yeah. kept some scars guard in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I give him props for that. Because if they went full spider like the original hit, then I would have been upset. I don't. I didn't care for that. What about, because you, you forgot uh, this person because he was barely in it. But the CGI, I would say, the the Jewish kid that killed himself. Yeah, yeah. I ended up skipping him, yeah, because uh, he's barely in the movie. Yeah, because, yeah. And then he writes a letter saying, oh, I needed to do this to bring you all together. Bitch, they fucking all came together without even knowing that you committed suicide. Did you yeah. catch that? It was so because he thought that it was like, oh, well, then I, I won't be something slowing you guys down. It, I mean, I, I get what you're trying to do. I, try to. I understand you're trying to redeem one character off the way. The whole point, though, is that it is so scary that he's killing people 
just from the fear that he's around. And that's what empowers him. Like, no, don't, don't take away from it. Um, yeah. Okay. So then let's uh, just real quick. But, but his C- okay, go ahead. Cause I was going to bring up his CGI when he was in the house, the dead head. I thought that was not too bad. Oh yeah. That was pretty good actually. Yeah. That was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even think about that one. Uh, what did yeah. you think about uh, real quick while we're talking about actors? I forgot him. The, the older bully that's coming around trying to kill him. Um, uh, I don't know. He was just there. Um, yeah. I wish I'd rather see him like, I don't know. And I, I don't hate it. Cause I like the concept, but I think I'd rather have him see that just to have it kill him because yeah. it would have been kind of neat too. But, um, the fucking zombie friend driving around the whole time. Come on, stupid. man. This is just so comedic. Like this is just a joke. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they, they they try to go too funny, and even the things that they didn't mean to be funny. Like I don't think the a lot of that zombie scene was supposed to be zombie no. friend was supposed to be funny, but it was stupidly funny. Like yeah. ha ha ha, I get it. You have a zombie driver. It's, I don't know. It just wasn't cared for. Yeah. Um, India. Okay, so what were the worst special effects in the parts that you didn't like the most? Oh man, the parts that I didn't like the most. Dang. Um, I don't want to go where I know you're probably gonna go with. Um, I'll go mine first then. Uh, yeah, go yours first. Okay, the two that I didn't like the most is the one that tried to scare, Bev- scare Beverly, which is Pennywise's daughter that eventually was like this like clay lady that was yelling, screaming, and chasing her yeah. down. Horribly, horribly done. Yeah. And the other really bad one was the big lumberjack that tried to kill uh, little Richie, <laughs> the Richie young yeah. version. And um, they were terribly done. And one of the big things that's a problem is they're done in the daylight. And when you do heavy CGI in the daylight, the lighting is never going to be accurate. And mm-hmm. that's why, like, you know, we talked about this in the past, but Godzilla, the, the 2001 version, was filmed in the rain and the dark to try to hide as much of the CGI as possible. Same thing yeah. Jurassic Park. It's in the dark. It's raining. It's, they're trying to hide the, the, the blemishes. And yet we have these CGI characters. They were like full daylight. That, that Paul Bunyan character was bright as day. And so you saw how the light bounced off it. It looked like it was a cartoon, like you're watching Mary Poppins. It was so terribly done. Um, they pulled me out of the movie right away. I, I didn't care for those. Yeah, and the thing... See, I'm okay with uh, CGI and the light. The thing is, when you make... Are you talking about Godzilla 1998? The 98, that's, that's the one, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, the, the Godzilla... I mean, sorry, no, I'm thinking of Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> no, I the Lumberjack and the Dark, the CGI, I don't mind it. If it looks super fake in CGI, the problem is that that lumberjack looks like a scary movie from like a Disney movie back in the early two thousands of Halloween Town. Like yeah. it, it was Halloween Town, yeah. It was pretty, hocus it pocus. Was not, no, <laughs> exactly. Like it wasn't anything. I don't know. It just wasn't very frightening. I guess. Yeah. So I'll I'll agree with you on that one. The old lady. I wish when you watch the trailer, like, oh shit, this is cool. It's just a weird ass crooked old lady chasing yeah. him and then you look at it and you're like okay this chase is lasting a little too long and it's just i'm um, over this fake ass looking monster yeah and that's yeah you're any old. other ones that you dislike um <sighs> or those I, I didn't care for scenes it as a spider for that long because yeah, of the big scene it was a long time um yeah no that's about it you know that's the thing too like if you look at uh, maybe we've talked about this but some of the, the best movies of all time, one of my favorites is Jaws. And Jaws was so good because you didn't see the shark the whole time. So you were afraid yeah. of this shark, this like lurking enemy that all you saw was just this top fin and you knew there's something wrong going on. If the whole movie showed Jaws the whole time, you'd have plenty of time to see how fake the shark actually looked. But it wasn't yeah. about how the shark looked. It was the presence of the shark. So like a good scene with Beverly and the old lady is when Beverly's sitting there talking to like on the phone or something like that. And you see the old lady kind of like tweak in the background a bit. Like she goes mm-hmm. too fast. You're like, oh, no, something's wrong. That is the best version of her. Then later on, when you see a full figure like running at her with like melting face and stuff, it's like, man, you guys took away all the coolness. So Yeah, because that scene was just getting you hyped when they showed it as a trailer. And that was yeah. so creepy at the same time. But then when that pops out, I would have been okay with like the old lady looking like that with the normal size of what she was. But then when you make it like almost touching the roof and uh, I don't know, it was whatever. Yeah. yeah All that's right. Tough. Uh, let's move on to. We'll go into directing. How did you think the directing was? Was there any um, like pacing? I think with the pacing was a big problem. That's one of the director's uh, responsibilities to keep the pacing the correct way. I think Act Two was way too long. That's when we have everybody doing those secondary flashbacks. 
I think the yeah. ending could have been cut down way. We don't need all these little like, oh, they got separated and now they're dealing with their own fears again. And, oh, I'm not going to fall for this cute dog again. And so like, like all those things were not needed. Uh, just so yeah. gratuitous. And that's the thing. a lot of people want movies where they're uh, detailed or what happened when this happened. We never followed up with that. Well, yeah, but then you get to a long movie like this and you're like, oh, my God, it was just so drained out. We didn't need all this extra shit just to hype up this ending. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't, yeah, man. Yeah, you're talking about pacing, and in the beginning, you're like, all right, okay. I mean, I don't really get why we opened up like this, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but at least it kind of uh, got into something right away, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, we saw it, like, first scene, that's badass. Mm -hmm. uh, th I mean, that's why I'm here. Right. And then um, Super just, I, I thought the dinner was cool because we're kind of doing the buildup uh, when they're at yeah. the Chinese restaurant. Yeah. And, oh, man, speaking of CGI, that was fucking stupid. Uh, the <laughs> bugs everywhere the like the weird like baby and the baby yeah. oh my god i was like this is really what it's gonna be but okay it's early still yeah um that was shitty cgi but that was cool because i like this I, I actually enjoyed them getting together and having a good time but mm -hmm. then you started going to the flashbacks you're like oh my god everyone gets a flashback and you're just taking its time with it yeah like two when you knew like this is gonna take forever because we still have yeah. all the other kids to go through exactly yep yeah uh, and then you got the bully too. Like, no, we don't need any more. <laughs> We're good. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Yeah. I think pacing was his biggest problem. Uh, shots wise, there were some really nice shots. Uh, I think one thing we got that was really nice from him is we kept getting these wide shots that show like Derry, the town or like going down the street, which kind of really kind of put in that um, small town feeling that they're trying to save the small town and then that save the world. So those shots are really nice. Uh, and then, okay. So we'll, we'll fold in the production as well. So that's, that's your settings. I really like that we returned to the same sewer spot that the end of the first movie happened to finish up the second movie. So we had that big sewer scape that had like the pile of junk. It's almost like he's collecting it over time. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I kind of like that we had the fam familiarity of that last spot and it was underneath the same house. So we kind of like, yeah. okay, movie's going to start now. Like when that, you could tell when act three started because it was them pulling up on bikes, you know, type of thing in front of that house again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you were talking about shots, but some shots I don't like. They two times they went into they were walking in Derry just in the middle of the street and it looked like nobody was there. Mm -hmm. Why does this town always fucking feel like it's deserted? Like sometimes That's it's fucking point. lively and stuff, but then two times it was just dead. I'm like okay, I guess at a certain time everybody has a curfew. Um, and then I didn't like some of the shots in the final battle because it really did just look like uh, a scene from Terminator and. It, yeah it was just yeah yeah it, it was it was just too much of a battle really I yes think. i agree a for way. a horror movie it, yeah it shouldn't have battles like that come on now yeah that's true yeah for a horror you don't see huge battles like that in horror movies normally yeah um okay so that was our scenes there was our productions let's see uh soundtrack i think soundtrack is always good because we have that kind they do a really good job with it honestly soundtrack wise except for like that one you were talking about where the kids get thrown up on and all of a sudden like we have cartoonish yeah. <laughs> movies are coming in that was weird yeah. just misplaced uh so uh, i mean i kind of laughed at it but it was still i shouldn't be laughing at this movie right now yeah <laughs> all right so is there anything else that, uh pros or cons you wanted to bring in before we start giving this thing a grade um no i mean i could go on for cons all day i thought uh the ritual was kind of stupid um yeah that was well, that was well, like unnecessary like why do these people that's one thing that it drove me nuts is why did the original people not believe it? Like that was Mikey's big things. Like I thought that they didn't believe in it enough. Like yeah, exactly. Dude, they invented the, <laughs> the ceremony you're about to do. They believed it enough. You know, it was just silly that all of a sudden. Oh, but I know best. You don't yeah. know nothing. Dude. You're a lamb butcher that stayed in town. I wish you really didn't follow it like the the old movie or like the book where it was this thing that came from the sky because it really does take you out from the first one. The first one is a creepy clown that is your fears yeah this one i wish they would have twisted it up a little bit and kind of kept that going and not make it because when you were when they were do, doing the rituals and then they did the drug then took you out and you start seeing uh mike's visions and it's like man you're really taking so me out of this movie like a hundred percent i don't feel like i'm watching a horror movie this this is a joke yeah i did i forgot about the whole stupid drug thing yeah um yeah there was there was a bunch of stuff like that and yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right there. I think it would have been cooler if it was just this like clown that died in a fire back in the day and then it had continued to haunt people. Kind of like how Freddy Krueger is, like how he died in the um, yeah, gymnasium yeah. fire or something like that, right? So 
Mm-hmm. Something like that was cool. Like the town was trying to hide a secret time when they had killed somebody. And then one thing I was thinking of too when you were talking about how empty the town is, how cool it would be. That first scene was at like a carnival, I think. But how cool would it be if like the whole time while the kids are worried about this, you see like in the background this town's having festivities of like this. Oh, it's the 4th of July parade. So um, while the kids are biking through town, they're trying to get through this 4th of July parade. And every so often they see like it across the street, like with balloons on and stuff like that, handing balloons to kids. Just it would yeah. be cool if the town was in full swing because you see moments where they're at a carnival. There's the, the House of yeah. Mirrors. But yet the town's empty on other scenes. That doesn't make any sense. It should have been like big old yeah. celebration. So I agree. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and break this down into a grade. Uh, out of 100, what are you thinking? Out of 100 red I Heart Dairy Balloons, I give it 30. <laughs> oh, my God. Out of 100, you give it 30. Yes. Damn, dude. That is so low. Yeah, um, I gave it a seventy. I, I think I gave it a seventy-five last time. A flat ooh, C. Oh wow, that's crazy. I, because I think it wasn't like it wasn't a terrible movie. I had my high hopes from the first movie. I think that's what's really doing it all. And I think that's what it is too. Like yeah. uh, going into this, I heard it was three hour, about three hours long, two fifty, and then I was like, that's not long enough. I could do five hours of this, yeah, and then nope. getting there, I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, cut this off now. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I I think I'm sticking with my 75. I might even go up to like 76, 77. After a week of kind of cooling down a little bit, I've kind of like softened up on it. Like, yeah, I had my hopes up. It was a a story that they were telling. If this was actually the whole movie, if there wasn't a first movie and this is all we had, I think this would actually have been better because we had nothing to compare it to. And then we would have had like, oh, flashbacks to them being kids. Like, I get that. Um, Yeah. If they were to replace the flashbacks with scene from the first movie, actually, I think I will edit that together. That would be cool. Um, From the scenes of the first movie, I think you might have a perfect horror film. Yeah, I think, yeah, honestly, just don't even have the flashbacks. And if you want to remind us real quick of what happened in the first one, okay, like you're saying, I'm I'm assuming that's what you're going with. Um, But just don't have flashbacks because nothing should have happened after it anyway. Yeah. Well, if you look at like the original 80s movie, well, the one I'm thinking of is okay. So, it, like for, for Beverly, oh, okay. she had the blood come up from the sink, right? Yeah. So, if instead in this movie she flashed back to that blood in the sink moment and then flashes forward to what's going on in the main story, it would have been cooler than her flashing back to a whole different thing. You know what I'm saying? Then you had her flash okay. back to the blood in the sink thing. Then she flashes forward and she's returning to that house. It makes way more sense. Yeah. Okay. And then she sees okay. the old ladies there. Stuff like that. Like little things like that, I think would have been a lot cooler. And then even yeah. in the final fight. You would have them flash like, what did we do last time kind of thing? And then they see like, oh, yeah, that's right. We're not afraid of them. And then it would make more sense if they would use that tool again. because Yeah, because the whole time they're trying to remember what happened. So it would have been better if they used that more, Yeah, I don't know, resource. Because they're getting their memories back. So it would be like, oh, yeah, that's right. This had happened to me. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. All right, guys. If you guys want any advice on how to make a movie, just give us a call. We'll help you out. <laughs> now, okay, on a totally side note, just a real fast little thing. You saw Brightburn, which we had already reviewed uh, a while back oh, here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Compare this to Brightburn. What you? What, how did you like this compared to Brightburn? Uh, Brightburn being an hour and a half movie, which I told you, which was nice to see because you yeah. don't really see those as much anymore. So it's nice. I don't have to go two hours plus. Um, there were some things that were left out. You made a joke about how he broke the lawnmower and you're like, well, did dad never notice the lawn was mowed? <laughs> which I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I started laughing, but you're like, okay, well, cool. We didn't. It would have been funny to be like, huh? Where's yeah. my lawnmower at? <laughs> and then and then cut it there. Uh, but I did like the fact that I didn't wait when I'm watching it. There was nowhere in the movie that was like, "Oh, this is a waste of time." Um, we didn't need this. Cut this out. You know, it, it got my favorite part was in the beginning was when we're seeing the baby videos of him growing up as a kid, mm-hmm. which is awesome because now I didn't need a freaking thirty minutes of how do we take care of this kid? You know? Yeah. Um. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. I actually didn't mind Brightburn, to be honest. I think, to uh, me, my biggest complaint was all the um, plot holes. There was quite a bit of plot holes to me, but yeah, I think it was a cool idea. I like that idea of it was a unique uh, uh, horror film that mm-hmm. had something that we all like superheroes right now. Um, I think I thought it was unique. I thought it was cool. I, I liked it. But, I mean, it wasn't like the plot holes bugged the hell out of me. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And there's yeah. plenty of them. The whole truck thing drove me nuts, but uh yeah, in that lawnmower like come on kid that's not gonna happen yeah let's go not too bad <laughs> um yeah i mean there was a i guess i don't know if this is james wan's thing of like hey i want to create this universe of all villains and mm-hmm. we're gonna kill everything because obviously at the had the way it ended with the newscaster talking about oh i seen this 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 and it could be real now yeah 
um, or a crazy person. So it's kind of like, well, if this kid's real, then there might, this you know newscaster could be telling the truth on whatever he's seeing. Uh, yeah. But then it's like, okay, well, then you're gonna you're just gonna make a bunch of movies of people killing or these superhero supervillains killing everyone. Uh, where's your conflict at? That's true. Yeah, it's just murder. There yeah. is no so nobody trying to stop them. Yeah, yeah, I wish that little fucking kid died, though. <laughs> yeah. Or if he, he grows up to be, uh, what's his name? The guy from The Boys. The main villain. Oh. Or the main hero. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> uh, Dana just watched that. He didn't care for that show. He finished oh, the wow. Well, fucking, like, that's why we don't like him on this podcast. <laughs> 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 Love you, Dana. We'll just joke around. <laughs> Before we have to hear about that. All right. Uh, next up, we're going to be reviewing Gears 5. All right, guys, so let's talk about Gears 5. Squeaks, you've been playing Gears 5. Uh, how yes. deep are you into this game? Uh, I think I'm almost done. Uh, Act 3, Chapter 4, I that believe. That sounds deep. Uh, yeah, so apparently what I found out, I don't know if this is true or not, because this is just looking it up, that there's only 15 chapters. Um, so, well, 15, yeah, 15 chapters. There's like four, yeah, I think it's five per, per act. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling for like I'm pretty close, which I don't feel like I'm close, but according to Google search, it says I am. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God Google. Okay. <laughs> uh, so let's kind of break this down into gameplay, graphics and stuff like that. And, and story. So, uh, mm-hmm. let's go story first. How are you liking the story? Now this is basically a sequel to the reboot. Is that correct? Correct. Um, I'm liking it so far. I'm liking it a lot better than I thought I would. So K is our well. They did a great job with this because in the beginning you don't play as K like they advertise all on TV. Mm-hmm. Um, you're playing as JD, which was the main uh, the main character in number four. So they did a good job at you're playing to him, and then you switch over, and you're like, okay, well we need to. Kate's got this mission of what the hell is going on with her because she's starting to have visions and. Um, these uh I don't know, yeah i guess i just just visions of everything with locust um so your goal is to figure out uh what's going on but what's you're slowly finding out is that her family um her mom her grandma was the leader of all the locusts oh, so shit. what you're, yeah you're slowly finding out like oh shit well if she went on with this locust ordeal she could kind of just control the whole army because she's i mean you play a level and you kind of do in a way mm-hmm. um so but she wants to stop it and she's trying to figure out the answers and where her what her family really is and that's kind of what you're going through the whole time i'm actually liking a lot more than i thought i would yeah uh, yeah, yeah. I, now i i played a little bit of one but i couldn't get into it so i'm pretty behind on the story uh yeah, very... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um the the I thought they were like aliens the 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 Lucas. Uh, I don't know what they really are. They're just monsters. Uh, the thing is that they all oh, start with the number one. The mer- they kept talking about a lot. It was Emergence Day, and it's, they basically just came from the ground, and uh, started killing. Okay, so okay, you, so they are from through. Earth essentially. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so through the storyline, is does, is there any like really good moments? Is there any kind of um. Do you feel like there's complete arcs, like you're actually seeing characters develop or anything like that? Um, just Kate, mostly. Uh, everything else that really stays the same, to be honest. Um, uh, JD is... You don't get a lot of JD because of what happens in the game is basically he kind of veers off of his friends because he goes through like this whole weird phase of, oh, I saw someone die kind of ordeal. Like oh, one of my okay. friends that could happen. Like it, like he blames himself. So he goes kind of veers off of the pack, and then they kind of hate him for it because he's not himself. Um, God, I forget this. Dell? No, not Dell. That was the first ones. Uh, uh, God, there's an, uh, another guy that follows you the whole time. It's gonna bother me because I always play with him. <laughs> I can't think of his name. But anyway, it, it, there's really no. There's only one character, but character development. And it's Kate, mm-hmm. um, and that's what you're trying to find out right now. So. Um, hopefully, did I answer your question in a way? Did I miss something? No, that's basically it. Yeah, I'm trying to wonder if like if it's because like with Halo, you really get hot and cold, right? So that's that's my yeah. example of this game is Halo. Um, but yeah, so some games are like super awesome, like ODST. You got an awesome storyline. You really fall in love with all the characters. Mm-hmm. Then you get like 
Halo 5, you're like, okay, so I'm either this group or I'm trying to fight to find Cortana, or I'm this group and I'm trying to defend Cortana, I think. And then at the end, they're like, nope, you guys both wanted Cortana. Like, <laughs> you know, so so the story doesn't really matter too much. It's like, oh, yeah, defend this base because apparently this governor is amazing. Like, I'm, I'm not invested in this. It doesn't matter to me. Um, yeah. So that's basically what I was wondering is with Gears, are you investing with these characters? Is the story interesting? Like, oh, no, I got to make sure that this is good or that's good. Um, you know, like ODST, you fall in love with the characters. Anything like that. That's what I'm wondering is if these characters you feel like you actually want to see where their lives go. Yeah, I I do because they're always with you a lot. So you build a relationship because they're always, you know, by your side. It's not um, you're not getting much development from them, though. It's not like one, two and three where you fell in love with Dawn because that was your best friend. It's kind of like what you're supposed to do with this. But that relationship to me, they're more partners in this one. Than they okay. are when Marcus and Dom were like, I felt like they were brothers. Um, yeah, that's my only thing. But everything else, though, no, yeah, like I. Well, they added another character into it, and you're kind of like, well, he could die. I don't really give a shit. <laughs> but uh, but the main JD uh, K and God, it's gonna bother the shit out of me. I can't remember this guy's name, but I'll look it up. But yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So that's that's basically your character development, your storyline wise. Uh, do you think that they're going to make a sequel that's following? It sounds like they're going to have one following Kate, though, the way they develop her more. Well, you know, are you talking about another one like Gear 6 would be about Kate? Yeah, because the way that she has the interesting story, like I'm not playing these games, want to know, okay, so is she going to control them or not? Like, it kind of sounds like a StarCraft 2 situation where you have like Kerrigan that could, it's running the uh, Zerg type of thing. Yeah, my thing, by the way, his name is Dill. Okay. <laughs> um <laughs> My thing is, I'm getting this vibe. All right, check it, check it. Okay, <laughs> so I'm getting this vibe where she's shown weakness before. She was like, you know what? I'll just, I know, Dell, you're just with me because you want to kill me. And Dell's like, oh, what are you talking about, girl? You know? And yeah. she's like, maybe I'll just kill myself. And then I was like, huh? She's being kind of like just the, the signs of weakness. So I'm like, man, I wonder if she gets to the certain point where she's like, I can't take it. And then she just becomes the new locust leader. And then six starts off where you got to kill Kate. Oh, shit. I know, right? All right, all right, all right. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Okay. All right. Um. Okay, so then let's let's go ahead and move on. Is there anything else from the story-wise or character-wise you want to talk about before we head out? Uh, No, I don't want to get... Um, No, because I haven't beaten it yet. I'm almost there, okay. so... Yeah, there's some really people that are out there like, yeah, she does do this or something like that that I like screaming at their <laughs> yeah, iPods yeah. <laughs> uh, Okay, but, so uh, yeah, um, yeah. visuals-wise, you got your graphics of your characters, graphics of your yes. surroundings... Your surroundings, the level design. How is that yep. looking? How do the, the graphics in this game look? The best graphics in a Gears of War game yet. Okay. They've sure. always thrown out oh, everything man. for like the particle effects and stuff like that. That's Gears yeah. is like prime. Uh, the any... cutscenes, yeah, the cutscenes are way more full, way more uh, bigger and better. And man, when the character's facial movements and just uh, there was a scene, there was a scene where a rocket shoot up in the sky and the, it was in a forest. So the trees and the waterfall looked beautiful. Um, they did a little open world concept now. It's not the whole game, but they threw they threw a little bit of open world in in Ooh, some like of the uh, some of the game. It's okay. I mean, I, I, it's not bad. Um, but um, that's neat because you get to drive uh drive around. As, I don't know, Scarif is what they call it. Mm -hmm. But um, there's this one part where you're in the desert and the sand is red, and then the sand's like kind of flying at you and whatnot because you're driving on it. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. So environment looks very good. Uh, characters look really good. Um, there's nothing bad visually in this game at all. Uh, okay, so how is like um, your movement and stuff like that? Is that pretty consistent? Because I remember the camera was pretty bouncy before. Is it still kind of over that shoulder bouncy look like you're following right up behind him? Yeah, same thing. Gears of War gameplay, if you want to jump the gameplay, it's, it's the same. New okay, weapons, yeah. that's about it. Yeah. All right, yeah, we'll move into gameplay. And, and, and uh, Okay, so yeah, so it's the same thing. Run and gun. Is it a heavy yep. cover base? Oh yeah, for sure. And that's what all the gears are. I think that's I don't think you'll ever they add a little open world to it, but I don't think they'll ever get rid of that main gameplay of it because that's what really gears is. With the open world, like I, I know you're saying it's just bits and pieces, but I mean, how big is the open world? Like how far can you explore? So, it's not huge. You can't explore anything, you know. It's not I don't know, I'm trying to think of an open world game. It's not Assassin's Creed level big. Okay. Um, they give you this little area and it's like, oh, here's some side missions. Oh, why don't you just go walk over to this area and see what you may find, you know? 
Uh, yeah. It's kind of like that, but it does take me away of playing Gears when you know you're beating these levels in normal Gears games, mm-hmm. and you're kind of like, oh, yeah, I just did all this work, and I didn't really get anywhere. Um, it's just, for me, I'm super biased on open worlds because every game that comes out, they make it feel like it has to be open world or it's a bust. Yeah. Uh, nowadays. And it's like, it doesn't have to be that way. But I thought it was kind of neat because they didn't make it too big. Um, it's very minimal still, but it's still a pretty good job to just kind of, I don't know, discover something new and still be like in this Gears of War world. Um, yeah, they're like it's almost like many levels in the open world. Like when you find a location, you go there and you're like, oh, now it feels like Gears of War. I see. I'm saying it right. That's yeah. kind of cool though. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, not bad. So each open world section is like completely unique from each other, right? Um, no, it's it's there's two open worlds, and they just got little locations in them, and they're okay. like mini levels in those locations. So it's not like it feels different or anything. You know what uh, I'm thinking? Uh, what are you thinking? like um, Destiny levels. Like when you're playing Destiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, like when you go to like the moon or Mars or something like that, it's not super big, but you kind of have like. Basically, I just traverse to one section or another, you know, like even on the moon, like, yeah, I'm on the moon, sure, but there's this part where these guys spawn and there's that part where these guys spawn and it's just clever yeah, level yeah. design. You know what? Yeah, I think you fucking, yeah, I think you nailed it with that okay. reference, actually, because mm-hmm. when you're on the moon, yeah, there's just different areas on this moon that you have to do and not necessarily it's the moon is huge because you kind of feel like you're still on this rail. Yeah, a little uh, bit, yeah. But yeah, it's that's actually dead on. I, okay. I would... Yeah, that's a good comparison. Uh, and that's a great game, so that's good to, to put out there then. Yeah. Um, okay, multiplayer. Have you done much multiplayer in this one yet? A little bit. Not too much because I'm still playing campaign, but a little bit. Okay, okay. Uh, it's pretty much the same stuff then, all the same options and stuff. Yeah, uh, They have an arcade mode now, which is kind of neat because each character comes with their own weapons, so it, it gives it a, I don't know, different... You have to like pick up weapons. Along okay. the way, you're not just given like a shotgun and a lancer. I see. Uh, so you'll see, you'll get the lancer and a pistol, and that's it. And then you'll pick up weapons on the way. But each character comes with different weapons, so it depends how you want to start off and how you want to play. Mm-hmm. So that's neat. Uh, I played a little bit of Horde, uh, the Horde mode. Mm-hmm. That's not too too bad. Uh, what I liked is that no character could be the same, so you can't see double of a different character. And each character has a special. So I thought with not being with not being able to pick the same character, you get a variety of different specials when you're fighting against the Locust. That's um, pretty cool. Okay. I haven't played the escape mode yet. Um, yeah, I'll probably do that later um, okay. this week. Um, but yeah, other than that, I've, the only thing that's new that I've seen is the arcade mode. And no other new features? In it? Like like with Halo, they put in like the Halo Forge and stuff like that. Any other new features? Other than just multiplayer? <sighs> Uh, Escape was the new one. I just haven't played it yet. Okay, that that's not part of like yeah. um, PvP or is no. So um, I guess it's a, a more fast paced horde. I don't. I I really okay. don't know. I didn't look into it that much, right? Um, to be honest, I'm just trying to beat the story real quick. Okay, okay, that sounds good. Uh, but that's that's kind of what I'm getting uh, yeah. with other people what they're saying. Hmm. All right. Uh, so any last thoughts you got on uh, Gears Five? Did you want to get out there before we start grading this thing? Uh, it looks great. It feels the, it's the most full, complete gears that there is. Ooh, um, they added some more multiplayer, um, like I said, with escape and horde, the horde's been there. Um, um, so they just obviously enhanced it with just better experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, but other than that, it feels like a gears game. Nothing, nothing really okay. crazy new. Right, this sounds pretty good. All right, yeah, so yeah. out of a hundred on this one, what do you think? How, out of a hundred lancers, is that? <laughs> oh, hundred lancers. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of them. <laughs> How many? <laughs> I'm just uh, like a pile of guns. Like that looks like an eighty nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give it eight and a half. Eight and a half. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Out of a hundred. Oh, or sorry, eighty five. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking. Like, yeah, our scales kind of whatever it wants to be. <laughs> Eight and a half yeah, out of Yeah, I'll give it 85. 85, <laughs> 85 okay. out of 100. That's and that's mostly because the open world felt um, like I don't want to work that hard. 
<laughs> when I play this game right now. Like, I don't want to explore. I want to go yeah. to my objectives, but I find myself... I mean, and, and it's great, too, but when you're coming off of other Gears games, you just want that game that's on the rail yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, multiplayer, they try doing something new, but it's it's still the same. Mm-hmm. Um, all it is is beefed up Gears game. And that's why, I mean, I love Gears, and that's why I gave it what it is. Um, if they would have added a tiny bit something else, maybe the multiplayer. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. It's just a beefed up steroid. Gears on steroids. And one more thing I wanted to bring up, uh, the Gears of War gameplay, is that they did add something new that I kind of just thought about. I don't know how it is because okay. it's a big part of the game. Uh, it's a three-player campaign, uh, which is an odd number to have. But what you, d- what you are is you're one of the main, obviously the main character, and then you play... Uh, mostly as um, as Dell for the second character. But what I like about it mm-hmm. is that you can flip flop it. So if you're playing by yourself, you don't have to play as K. You don't have to play as Dell. Um, also, the third character is Jax, and uh, he's a robot from the first games with Baird when he would always command Jax what to do. So now he's a playable character. I don't know how fun that'd be when you're playing three players and you're the actual person controlling the robot. There's objectives for the robot that has to do. He can also help defend. Um, so I don't know how fun it is as a person playing it. But in the game, just playing by yourself, you command Jax what to do. Uh, he'll sometimes he could go pick up a gun for you, pick up ammo. He can... Um, uh, the big thing that he can do is has abilities to help you out. So he... Um, has a, a stealth ability. He could turn you invisible. He could put a shield on you. He could shock uh, other locust enemies. Uh, he could also blind them too. So what you would do is kind of point out the pwn out to the enemy and say he want to uh, blind them because they're behind cover. He uh, does like a flashbang on them. Now they kind of daze, and you, now you have the opportunity to uh, to start shooting them. Uh, I really like the stealth ability. The stealth ability is honestly, you turn yourself invisible and you can do whatever you want, of course. But if you're using it, there's certain times in the game that forces you to use it. But then when it's not, it's kind of nice that you use it. I would like to run behind everyone and then I start shooting everyone from behind. So that's a big one. What's really neat about Jax is that you uh, collect these uh, uh, upgrade items. Uh, I forgot what they're called in the game. These upgrade items that the more you have, the more you can upgrade them. So what's really neat is while you're upgrading him, you're changing the looks of him, just to make it look more. I don't know. Oh, that's cool. yeah. It's yeah. not. It's not. Um, you're not changing him yourself, but the fact the more you upgrade, the more he looks more beefed out. Um, and that. How big is he overall? I'm imagining like a little droid from Star Wars. Is he actually like the same size as the other Marines? Think of like a flying uh, R2D2 size. Okay. Yeah, okay. De- decent. Um, but that that is super interesting. Uh, I haven't, like I said, I haven't done co-op with Jax or anybody that wants to be Jax. Maybe I'll just try it out one time. Um, but uh, that that's a uh, that's huge though because it is something that I. Uh, I'm just now bringing up, kind of forgot about it, but it, yeah. <laughs> it's a whole different mechanic in the game. Um, uh, this also, though, it does feel like your partner doesn't do as much uh, besides Jax now. Um, say if I'm Kate and I'm with Dale, Dale, it's like, oh my gosh, if you would have just shot him one more time, I would have been dealt with this boss. Uh, it feels more you have to command him, so you have to press the left stick or whatever you're playing on. Uh, to com- uh, command Dell to shoot a specific target, which I feel I'm not sure. I don't, I'm trying to think of one one through Judgment Day four or whatever, and it's like I don't remember ever having to do that. They just kind of did a good job at supporting me, but this one it's like okay, they're lacking really, um, unless I tell them to so you rec- can, uh, shoot them. Can you command them to do anything else like patrol this area or watch my back? No, or anything like that? no, actually, unless I'm really missing anything. But all I know is that you press, uh, you can kind of aim something and you say focus fire on this one specific thing, and then um, that's it. I don't, I don't have any, I don't see any options to do like what you're saying. I think it's a little too advanced for this game, but um, but when you do command them to tell, when you tell them to shoot something. 
they do a good job at doing it. You're like, holy shit, now they're unleashing everything. Why didn't I do this a long time ago? <laughs> so, because yeah. some things, there's yeah. like a, like other droid jaxes that are putting a shield around a locust, and you need to destroy that one. So then you tell, hey, fire at that, uh, you know, wannabe jax droid. And then they'll just go to town with it. And you're like, oh, sweet. I didn't know why. Kind of, It's kind of a... Uh, uh, it's kind of a thing that you forget about. So I kind of didn't use that until uh, towards the end of the game. And it's like, man, I wish I, I don't know. I wish I would have rem- remembered it. Wish it was big enough to remember it. I don't know. It reminds me of uh, like in Titanfall when you have, you can bring down your, your, uh, your Titan and he could either, you could either ride in him or have him just wreck. And I always just like, you do your thing, man. I'm good without you. And it's kind of cool because you could like, all right, attack this area and then use him as cover while you're doing your thing. Like you're easily the better player of the two of you guys, but you just need somebody to kind of like make a distraction or uh, complete one objective for you or something like that. You know, so it's kind of a extra gun in the room. Yeah. And that's what it really feels. And you can tell the more that you're using those mechanics, the more that's how it's supposed to play. So instead of going in and they're playing like any other gears game, like I usually do run and gun and you know cover here and there it really did it's trying to force you to play differently especially with these abilities that Jax can give you with uh invisibility and smoking and it's like something that you need i had a i found myself having to step back and be like all right i need to think more before i just kind of go in there and play the typical gears game okay okay yeah uh, do you remember the game is off of a, off the side again? Uh, full spectrum warrior. You ever played that no, one? I don't think so. No, dude, I think you'd like it. It's, it is essentially, a uh, like a real time, not a real time. Um, it's a modern combat game, uh, kind of like SOCOM in a way, uh, where you fully control all four people in your squad and you tell them to go cover here, fight there, stuff like that. But yeah, it sounds like this, but like precision version. Oh, so that's, is, that's a, that was a classic from the old Xbox. Yeah, days. is that kind of like a what's that game like Desert Storm, where you kind of? Oh man, I think it's. I think it might be. Uh, yeah, I think it either. No. Yeah, it might be exactly that actually. <laughs> yeah, it might be just like that. I mean, do you remember SoCom, the old SoCom games? Uh, oh yeah, for sure. That was like amazing when that came out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, All it's right. definitely different. If you're new to Gears or you haven't played since the first one. Uh, would you suggest this to be the one to come into, or should they go back and play one of the other ones? Probably play four, so you know four. what's going on. Okay. But if you don't give a shit about story and you just want to experience it, yeah, this is the one to get on to. Okay, I'll probably pick up four then. I think four is on the Game Pass even, so, I mean, like, uh, why it not? Is. Yeah, all of them are on Game Pass. I love that shit. I love the Game Pass so much. Yeah. Oh, man. So yes. Great. With my amazing trickery over Microsoft of canceling it and waiting for that dollar deal the next month. I never pay full price. <laughs> <laughs> I know I did this like dollar ultimate upgrade limited time thing and then I'm yeah. good for like 2022 for a dollar. Damn, that is good. Yeah. That's great. All right, guys, that is going to be it for us for today. Uh, first, before we go, what have you guys been playing lately? John, are you playing anything lately? Um, negative. I still am like in the middle of Skyrim, but I haven't had time to get back yeah, to it. Do that so. Grind. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, nothing new. Daniel, what have you been playing lately? Uh, right now I'm playing the same games, playing League of Legends. Uh, kind of raged last night on Madden. You? Oh, okay, Madden. I was like, you raging over League of Legends never happens. Uh, League of Legends, I kind of got over it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, no, not over the whole raging. There's no oh, point. I see. Uh, and then that's good. Madden is just like I'm trash. Like, I'm fucking shit. Sorry. <laughs> the heat. So my buddy always just intercepts me, or he's just so good that he always freaking gets picks. And then I I just suck, and I know it. So I might give up on that game. And uh, I wanna, I'm want to. i thinking about getting the new Call of Duty. I'm getting it. I'm thinking about it. I'm using Wild Gold mm-hmm. to buy it. But I want FIFA. So I'm like... Oh, don't get that. That's easy. I just solved your problems. I, I've been waiting... A couple years for the next FIFA. Like Play the last last FIFA. It'll be the same thing. You oh, always buy the most the no. every Madden and every FIFA. I actually don't. Really? I, I actually good. skipped like three years of FIFA. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, and I, I love soccer. It's crazy. If you want them to stop their uh, loot box madness, you got to not be buying their games. No, I'm not gonna do the loot box thing. Yeah. I don't. I don't do the whole Madden card thing. Yeah. 
I just play Madden franchise. I'll, I'm getting Call of Duty, so if you want to get Call of Duty, you'll have somebody to play with. PC or Xbox? PC. Okay. Because I'm buying it with gold. Is it cross server? Uh, it might be. Just get it on PC. Why are you trying to? You have uh, a nice PC, but nicer than mine. Yeah. It, I, about it. I have the Xbox controller for my PC, so I, I just, gotta see where you know. my money's at because I, I haven't been saving like I, I was supposed to. No, you just bought a whole mic system. And like and you're you tell me your PC doesn't start up right away and I'm like I mean, that, why are you not buying the new SSD card? That was still extra money. So yeah. I was like, eh. And I, I had like a Visa gift card. So oh, that's the, right. Yeah, the work bonus. That would yeah, kind of work. Cool. All right. I've been playing uh when I've had a moment. Lately I haven't had much moments, but uh Wow Classic and it's amazing. And that's all there is to it really. We're gonna be doing a review for that next next week. So you'll be getting our retro review basically of like, you know, looking back. Okay, so because we did a big episode about Wow Classic. Next week next recording we're going to be talking about wild classic and how you know how it's been ported over how it feels playing it again and stuff like that so that's coming up next um but yeah that's it for us for this week we'll talk to you guys all next week bye, bye. bye. thank you for joining us on the geek freaks podcast you can find us on twitter at geek freaks pod we're also on Facebook, Instagram. You can email us. We have our Patreon and a store. All those links are in the description. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week.